time, and you can believe this, Osmond Thompson may have said earlier this week that he wasn't going to cheer for Alabama State because he played at Tuskegee. Osmond Thompson's got an Alabama State shirt under his T-shirt on today. <laughs> <laughs> it runs deep, doesn't it, partner? <laughs> hey, and I said it last year, Michonne. I've been on both sides. I've been at Tuskegee. I've been at Alabama State. My loyalty to that maroon and gold. Any day of the week it goes, except when we play them here on a Saturday at the Labor Day Classic. As far as I'm concerned, those buses can crank up and go back up 85 to Tuskegee, and they can take an L with them on the way. That's right. They can take an L with them on the way. It's time. Oh, man, I'm ready to go. I'm jumping up and down. If you could go back in time, partner, I'd be playing right now. Put it that way. Because <laughs> I'm fired up, JC. <laughs> I can understand it. You know, I, I, I didn't play football against Tuskegee, but I played baseball against Tuskegee. But the robber ran just as deep, just as deep. It's, it, it's so bad right now that both teams do the same thing. And this is the this is where football has gone. So you got both teams. They go to the end zone and pray. The officials get between them both while they're all kneeling, looking with their head down, bow to the Lord, and the officials are still in the middle of both of them. That's how far this college football has gone. But it all goes back to that coin toss, that all the jaw jacking going on in the coin toss, and now you got to do this during the pregame. <laughs> How'd you like to be in that church on Sunday? <laughs> Oh, man, I love it. Football is here in Montgomery, Alabama. First home game of the season. All the fans there in the hoopla, like you said, the tailgate's going live. We still got the smoke coming from the grills. The bands are all playing. The fans are dancing. The music is pumping. And guess what? We got a football game. And at, the end, of the, at the end of the day, it's about the X's and O's. You know, all the hoopla and all the talk and all the jaw jacking. Now it's time to do it in between the lines. All the talking is done. They'll still talk on the field, but all the talking is done. Now, we'll line it up, and we'll play for 60 minutes, Alabama State and Tuskegee. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Alabama State football on the Hornets Sports Network. Corey Merritt, Ezra Gray back deep for Alabama State to return this opening kickoff. Tuskegee's got a new kicker in place this year. Dalton Hall, the big boomer for the for the Golden Tigers, is gone. It'll be Arnis Huskett kicking off. He's the guy that had the field goal block last year that won the game for Alabama State here in that Labor Day Classic. The sophomore will do the kicking duties. He'll kick it off from the left hash. 97 degrees here kickoff. Partly cloudy skies in Montgomery, Alabama. The wind east at four miles an hour. Travis Jerome, Michonne Sanders, J.C. Coleman, Rob Taylor coming to you live from ASU Stadium for the 2019 Labor Day Classic. The Hornets and the Golden Tigers. Tuskegee will be in their road white, red numbers. Alabama State in their home black with white numbers, gold helmet, black pants. And game number two of the 2019 Alabama State season is underway. This will be Ezra Gray. He'll fill it on a hop at the 10. Gray up the middle, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, still on his feet. He'll get tackled at the 40-yard line, and Alabama State will have good field possession to start. Off an Ezra Gray, 31-yard kickoff return to start. Pretty surprised that Tuskegee elected a kick to Ezra Gray right there. I know they've got the family. He's a dangerous return, man. But... They did, and they paid for it right there, but he also made the play. Players got to make plays. Ezra Gray right there, straight up the middle, like you said, up the left side of that return, and setting up Alabama State for great field position on the first drive. Kaderis Davis will be under center for Alabama State to start things off. He'll go three wide, ball in the middle of the field. He'll have two receivers set to his right, one to his left. In the backfield with him is Ezra Gray. Gray goes up the middle, bulls his way up, and then runs into three Tuskegee defenders, but not before he picks up a gain of five. And, guys, Gray, 5.7 yards a game, a carry last week. I guess a solid UAB defense as well, uh, and a fast UAB defense. So, right there, Ezra Gray doing what we need to do, and that's continually getting positive gains on first down to set us up for second and short, third and manageable type run. And, and uh, one thing I saw on that play, uh, the Tuskegee lineman was going backwards. So that means our, our offensive line is firing off the ball. Again, same formation. Now we'll go four wide. Two to the left, two to the right of Davis. The wide side of the field is the right side. He'll send Larry Brown in motion to that side. 
They'll run a simple stretch play. Gray has it. He's trying to stretch that defense out, tries to use the speed. Gets out of bounds at the 46. He's run out there by three defenders. Could have been a little bit of a late hit, but they're going to let him play here to start. It'll be third and five, Alabama State, from their own 46 to start. That time the Golden Tigers were showing cover two early, and then they rotated over to a man coverage. So Alabama State was able to run their defender down to the lower sideline of the field out of the play to set Ezra Gray up for that run right there. Third and five, passing situation here for Alabama State. They'll look to the sideline to get to play. Larry Brown will be set up as kind of an H-back. He'll have two receivers to his left and one to the short side of the field to his right. He'll put Gray over to his right with Davis. Davis looks left, finds his receiver. Jeremiah Hicks and spins away from one defender. Gets across midfield to the Tuskegee 44 before he's brought down for a big game for Alabama State on third down. And that's what you got to do as a receiver. The playmakers out there, you got to be able to make one miss. If you can't make one miss, then you don't need to be out there. That way, Hickson was able to make one miss right there, number two for Tuskegee, and pick up a five positive first down. I like the way this drive is going so far. Good momentum. First and 10, Alabama State from the Tuskegee 43-yard line. Four receivers set. He'll send Gray out in motion. Davis looks right, has a receiver, overthrows, and it's going to be picked off. Picked off by Tuskegee at their own 34-yard line. This is Ken Hike. He'll bring it back to the Alabama State 43, and we've got a penalty flag down. And I think that might be on Jeremiah Hickson, the way that Alabama State coaching staff just reacted. We'll see if it is on Hickson. It'll be a big game for Tuskegee. It was against, he was blocking DeVorest Thomas, or DeVorest Thomas was blocking him, but Davis just overshot his receiver. It looked that time. I think that's going to be on Tuskegee. Uh, uh, Hickson was responding. So no foul, and you got you called it. I believe they were going to call it on Tuskegee, but after they talked to both guys, they went ahead and just waved the flag off. And they're going to move the ball back. It looked like Hike got across the 40. They're going to move it back to the 48. Tuskegee have been showing that drive, cover two, and then rotating the man. That time they stayed in cover two and confused the Darius Davis. And so they were able to see the missed tip uh, from the Alabama State receiver and number seven there for Tuskegee was able to re uh, catch the interception and make the play. How about this? Jamarcus Ezel, the starter for the Golden Tigers. He kicks it outside to his receiver. And there are a lot of number changes for Tuskegee folks. Right before this game, that's Stephen Hodges from Park Crossing High School here in Montgomery that makes that catch. He's out of bounds at the Alabama State 34. And this Alabama State defense gave up some, a few plays to UAB early, and then they were able to, to settle down for the remainder of the game and really keep UAB on their heels on their heels offensively. So throw my matchups in the trash and keep yours. You called it there, partner. You said Jamarcus Ezell will probably be in this game, and sure enough, he comes out the first play of the game. Four receivers set, but I didn't call that he would make a completion on the first play as Ezell goes left. That ball's tipped, and it's caught. And if Alabama State wouldn't have been backpedaling to get into pass defense, they had a chance to intercept that. But they lose a good chunk of yardage back to their own to the Alabama State 38-yard line. We had a real good uh, push up front that time. And, you know, the, the impressive thing right now is that our offense and defensive line are winning these battles in the trenches. And I think that's going to come to play as this game wear on with this heat out here today. A hot day. This Tuskegee offensive line is already hurting depth-wise. Guys, four of those offensive linemen have long sleeves on. And here's Ezel and shotgun. Two backs in the backfield. He Helmed it off to Taylor. Torian Taylor around the right side. He's got some good speed. Gets the edge. Able to pick up a first down. Let's see where they mark him. Kenny Gann is the power back for Tuskegee. Torian Taylor is a speed back. And Taylor used that speed. It'll be a first down Tuskegee at the Alabama State 24-yard line. And that was, that was a huge momentum change on the interception early in this first quarter right now. But Alabama State, oh, they're still in good position. They just got to settle down on defense, understand, hey, let's keep them out of field goal territory. They're right now teetering on the edge of that. So let's stop them right here. No more positive yards, and we can kind of get out of here unscathed. Ezel goes back. He'll have a pistol formation. He'll have a back to his left as well, two receivers to his left and one to his right. That's the dangerous Peyton Ramsey. Taylor goes in motion to the right side. Now you got the two speedsters on the same side of the field. Here's Ezel. He's going to look into the end zone to Taylor on the wheel route. Taylor, and then Keenan Isaac with a great bat, with a great bat to get it out of his hands. Great pass breakup by Keenan Isaac to close the gap on that play. 
Keenan Isaac was baiting the quarterback on that play. I was kind of worried because when, when Taylor rotated out there in the flat, he didn't really go with him. He kind of slow rolled it to kind of bait the quarterback. And then when he saw it releasing his hands, he went to attack the ball. And like you said, use that sideline as the extra defender, defender number 12, to push Taylor out of bounds. And you're absolutely right because he actually uh, baited the quarterback because the quarterback locked on to that receiver. He, he did not check out any other receiver. He just locked on that one receiver. Two receivers for Tuskegee on this play, second and 10 from the 24. Peyton Ramsey will be to the right. Stephen Hodges will be to the left. Peyton Ramsey waving his arms over to that Tuskegee timeout, that Tuskegee sideline. We've got a timeout on the field. We'll take it with them back after the 60-second timeout. Hi, I'm Amy Goodman, host of Democracy Now! For an independent source of news and information, we bring you diverse perspectives from around the world and a deeper look at the most important events and issues that have an impact on you and your community. Join me for Democracy Now! weeknights at 7 p.m. on the Sound of Excellence, FM 90.7, WVAS. Band Marcella Shapar. Each week we're counting down the top 10 jazz albums of the week, presenting a unique perspective on the music and the artists making it happen. We feature the best new music hot off the press as well. You'll find that and more when you join us here for the cool jazz countdown. Here's Ezel. Ezel into the end zone. Pass caught by Ramsey. Touchdown, Tuskegee to start. A 28-yard strike from Ezel to Ramsey, and I think that's why Ramsey must have called timeout. He saw something that he liked. Yeah, Alabama State was sitting in uh, cover two there, and the uh, nobody threatened that flat. The corner should have probably carried uh, with that uh, the, uh, wide receiver for Tuskegee there. Instead, let him get behind him. Safety was late rotating over. Touchdown in the back corner of the end zone. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, uh, feel that out and uh, make, the, make the necessary adjustments on that. Hussick on to attempt the extra point. Kick is up. Kick is good. And with 10.57 to play in the opening quarter, Tuskegee leads 7-0 over Alabama State. Timeout on the field. We'll take it with them back after this 90-second timeout. You're listening to Alabama State Football on the Hornet Sports Network. On your purpose at Alabama State University. Choose from more than 60 degree programs from undergraduate courses in computer technology, education, theater arts, business, and the sciences to high demand graduate degrees in physical therapy, social work, microbiology, and more. Our world class faculty is ready to help you reach your goal. You'll also enjoy a vibrant campus life and Division I Athletics. Come to our campus. Let us show you why it's always a great time to be a Hornet. For more information or to complete an application, visit us online at alasu.edu or 334-239-4291. Alabama State University. The time is now. Just let me know when you can when you get out. And imagine. It takes five seconds to send the text. And for those five seconds, you're driving blind. Life is worth more than the text. Stay alive. Don't text and drive. Visit stoptextstoprats.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Three, two, one, you're back. 10.57 to go, opening quarter. Tuskegee strikes first, an interception for on um, Kaderis Davis. Gives Tuskegee great field position in Alabama State Territory to start. Wastes no time. Peyton Ramsey, a 28-yard catch from Jamarcus Ezel, the Golden Tigers lead. 7-0, guys, and it's one of those things. Tuskegee. Is in Alabama State shoes where they were last week. You come out and you try to strike early and you try to take the momentum away because you're playing up a level. 
Yeah, and, you know, one thing I saw far in the early in this first quarter so far is both defense are kind of struggling to adjust to what each offense is doing. For the, not for the miscue as far as the tip ball, Alabama State well off could be up uh, at least tied 7-7. Tuskegee was struggling with us going down the field. We just had the tip ball. They were sitting in zone. It was an easy interception that led to the Tuskegee touchdown. And that's what we're going to have to do. We got, we're going, definitely going to have to limit the turnovers and the mistakes because you know, a good team like a Tuskegee team or any team for that matter, you can't just give them turnovers and you got to make them beat you and don't beat yourself. Husky on the kickoff for Tuskegee. It'll be great. And Merritt back deep again. Told you we had some players dinged up a little bit. We'll try to see if we see Bell on the sideline here in a minute. Here's the kick from Huskett. He'll kick it to the left side. This will be Gray. The return is set up at the six. Gray up the middle, stutter steps at the 25, gets to about the 29, where Alabama State again, good field position to start. Let's see if they can make Tuskegee pay for this one. Yeah, we definitely we just got to settle down on offense, continue to do what we were doing. We were driving the ball well there, partner. We just got to make sure that we tighten up some things, don't want any tip balls. Definitely don't want those tip balls out there because Tuskegee be waiting. And I think, you know, they came out with a little butterflies uh, early on, so – and the quarterback had happy feet, you know, so this time he should be pretty settled. The round ball in the backfield with Kadarius Davis. Three receivers set, Larry Brown in motion to the right. We've got a whistle. Not sure what happened. Play clock was at six, so we know it's not a delay a game. And I'm not even sure what happened if they're looking to see where the spot was, but Gray got up with the football. Yeah, I didn't see a fumble there. You're absolutely right. So it, it's got to be something spot related. And it, it can't be where he caught the football unless they think that the shadow was his knee. I mean, I know Ezra's 5'9", but there's no way his knee touched the ground on the return. It's got to be a spot issue on this, and we'll see. But, again, early, early stages. We were here last year. We were here last week. Tuske our UAB scored first. We answered. And, J.C., we called that. You know, we were talking about a seven-minute spurt. On the coaches' show Monday, we realized it was a minute-and-a-half spurt where there were 27 points. That's right. Uh, and they came out shaky. Team seemed to be a little shaky the first time, uh, uh, first time around. But, uh, you know, I think they, I think when this quarterback can get settled in uh, like he did last week, uh, we'll be all right because Chesky has not shown that they can stop us. Not so far, not, not at all. You know, again, early in this ball game, plenty of time left. Yeah, we had to miss Q. You got you to gotta get rid of that out of your mind as, as the quarterback. That's over with. Previous series is gone. Let's go down the field right here. This is what I'm talking to my offensive linemen and those guys in the huddle. Hey, we get, let's go down here. We're going to go answer right back. We'll be right back in this ball game. Our guy Rob Taylor is getting a little antsy down there on the sideline. We can see him standing at about the 15. As soon as we can get him on, we'll get him on with you. Here from ASU Stadium, still awaiting. Not sure what's going on, but here's the call right now. question I know it was a replay Gray came up and caught the ball and shot out of it like he was standing still and, and but if you got a knee down I didn't see him raise the leg back up but we can't question the replay but again we went back I told you I didn't know if they saw a shadow or not and that's the one disadvantage folks we moved down a couple booths this year into the television room so we can't see the replay maybe we need to move back next week <laughs> I was just gonna say that <laughs> I'm looking around for the replay booth. I'm like, oh, we're in a different booth this year. So <laughs> that's out. First and 10, Alabama State from their own seven. Davis across the middle has a receiver. That's Michael Jefferson. Makes the catch, avoids the first tackle down at the 20. It'll be a first down for Alabama State at their own 20 yard on a quick strike, a quick slant to Michael Jefferson that time. And that's what I'm looking for when I was talking about the matchup. Now I can get him back out of the trash. And Michael Jefferson using that big, long frame on those slant, those poles, and those fades over the top against the smaller Tuskegee secondary. Here's Davis. Davis 
We'll have Bell to his left, three receiver set. Larry Brown will go in motion to the left side. Davis fakes to Bell. Now he's got a scramble. He's just going to run out of bounds instead of throwing it out of bounds. And in the meantime, loses six yards on the play when he got out of the pocket. Could have tossed it out of bounds, and it would have been second and 10 instead of second and 16. A lot of confusion there. Looked like there was a busted play, and Davis just ran out. I wonder if there was a lineman up the field, and that's why he didn't want to throw the ball to get the penalty because I can't understand, like you said, why he would take a six-yard loss rather than to throw it away. Yeah, it seems like he's, uh, he's, he's feeling a little nervous, so uh, we're going to sit here and, and watch his series and wonder how long uh, will this go on. Bell goes in motion. Quick pass out to Bell. Receiver can't engage his block. And that's trying to see who that was that was trying to get the block. That was actually Larry Brown, the tight end. And Alabama State going the wrong way. Now they're back to the 10. It'll be a third and 20 for the Hornets. And uh, he did a great job in Bell in just securing that ball because number eight for Tuskegee, the 6-2 uh, line defensive end, Sean McGee, was coming down, barreling in on that. He had rotated out into the flat on that wide receiver bubble screen, and he was getting ready to intercept that ball. So thank goodness Bell was able to hold on to that and not um, have an even worse play. Here comes Davis. Third and 20, drops back to pass. Heavy pressure from Tuskegee. Davis rolls right. Had a receiver open in Ishmael Salim. If he hits him, it's a first down, but he bounces it to Salim. It'll be fourth down, turnover, and they'll have to punt and give it to Tuskegee. Right there, I saw a difference there, J.C., real quick before I, you know, cut you off. Sorry about that, but I saw a difference right there with the just the, the game plan because last year, Davis wouldn't have gotten that call. It would have been a handoff there on a, on a, dry, a dive. You know, third and 20 is not a lot of third and 20 plays. That there showed the coaches trust Davis to make the plays. He dropped back. We didn't execute it, but that, that's interesting to note so far. And it, it also shows that the uh, coaches have been pretty aggressive, too. You know, we're, we're going for it. You know, we, we're going to try to get the big plays, and we're not playing conservative right now. Anthony Craven on to do the punting. This ball might have actually gotten a hand from Tuskegee on it. It'll bounce out of bounds. And again, Tuskegee will have good field position when we come back. With 8.36 to play in the opening quarter, Tuskegee leads Alabama State 7-0 from ASU Stadium in the Labor Day Classic back after this 90-second timeout. It took me a long time to be able to say Chandler has cancer. That is such a scary word. Rob, can you hear me now? Rob. Jay, we ready? Fifteen seconds. All right. Rise. With just one town over, <coughs> his chances at a healthier life improve. At the Y, our programs help all kids thrive, no matter where they're from. Support your local Y at ymca.net slash four or seven up. Three, two, one. You're back. Welcome back to ASU Stadium. Tuskegee takes over first and 10 on a Alabama State 40 after just a 30-yard punt from Anthony Craven. Jamarcus Ezel under center hands it to Torian Taylor. Darren Johnson read that ball perfectly, guys. Five-yard loss on the play. Darren Johnson read it so well, he almost took the handoff from the quarterback instead of getting to the running back. Excellent job right there. That's how you respond right there on defense, setting them up for second and 15 here uh, in mid-first quarter. Excellent, excellent defensive, defensive play that time. Second and 15, Tuskegee from the Alabama State 45. Ezel back to pass. Here comes the blitz. Isaac gets in. Ball broken up on the pass by Devin Booker. Tuskegee wants pass interference. 
Looked like a little bit from it up here, but Alabama State is at home, got the call on that one, and Isaac came with that heavy pressure from the right side. Tuskegee showed a bunch trips package to the bottom part of the football field. That time elected to go away from that. Look for them to come back to that down here. We was a little bit of confusion on defense. Some guys were streaking open. So hopefully we can get that corrected, but that's something to watch later on in the game. And actually the defensive end on the other side actually went, un well, that linebacker on that side went unblocked that time. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see later on when they come back to that. Third and 15, Tuskegee. Alabama State 45-yard line. Pressure coming from the outside from Nick Terry. Here's Ezel. He gets away from it. He scrambles. Christian Clark, the big 380-pound defensive tackle. He and Kenny Isaac in on that stop. It'll bring up a fourth down for Tuskegee. And they're in Alabama State territory. Let's see if they punt the football or if they go for it here on a fourth down. Well, you got to give Natron Culpepper a lot of credit that time because he, he was playing lockdown defense and there was nobody open. So that credit the defensive back. That was a good coverage uh, sack that time. Tuskegee will come out to punt from their own 42-yard mm -hmm. line on 4th and 12. It'll be Husky. On to do the punting. Josh Hill back to return the kick for Alabama State. Mm -hmm. Hill has that visor on, which is why he's back deep today with that sun still out. We've got a flag, and there'll be a delay of game. Kinda, you, you really kind of expected that to give them some more field position. Yeah, I think I think that was by that was by design. Uh, you know, they want to make sure they get this ball in, in the field of play and you know not kick it out of the end zone. So I think that was by the by design. And yeah, it was by design. Kind of kind of strange though, just from the perspective you're at the 40 at this level, you expect punters to be able to angle that, you know, and and, and do some of those things that that lo they look for at the next level. So hey, you got to know your personnel. They backed it up. So hey, that works favorably mm -hmm. for us. Josh Hill stands with his heels on his own 10-yard line. Husky gets the snap, lets his team get down the field. He hits this one off the outside of his foot. And it'll only go about 20 yards. It'll go out of bounds. Let's see where they're going to mark it. It'll be Alabama State football first and 10 from their own 18-yard line. And Alabama State will have possession. around the time here as a player you start to settle on into the game all of that pre-game stuff jitters and excitement is gone away you've had a couple series to run some of that off you got some Gatorade so now we'll see who is ready to play today who's been excellent who's been reading the game plan throughout the week and watching film first and 10 Alabama State from their own 18 Davis We'll hand this football off to Gray. Gray fights for some yardage, and he'll pick up a couple. Tuskegee saying the ball came out. The referee's going to come in and say the ball was down. So it'll be second and eight. Yeah, Gray is pretty strong, Nate. He, he, he carried about five Tuskegee defenders that time. He refused to go down. <laughs> and coaches, coaches sometimes get confused in front of because they'll say, go down, go down, go down. No, 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 don't keep going. And so, you know, you just got to kind of let the players play there. But, yep, he was down, so no fumble. Davis, shotgun formation. He looks right, gets it to Jeremiah Hickson. Hickson stuttered like he thought there was a defender there, but able to pick up a good 10 yards for a first down for Alabama State. Good route concept called there by ASU. Had Hickson in the slot, slipped him out on the out route, pushed up the outside receiver to clear for him. You're right. I'm kind of uh, it's kind of strange. He thought a defender would be there because we had to clear to the outside of the play. So he hesitated, but still, all in all, got the first down. Davis quickly will hand it off to Gray. Gray nowhere to go. There's a face mask. It doesn't get called. We could see it from here that Gray's head went forward as Tuskegee reached in. He'll lose about four. It'll bring up second down and 14 for Alabama State. And I think that, and that particular time, our yeah, offensive, line, offensive line I've been bragging on lost that battle. Yeah, they, they lost the battle at the line. you got to set the edge, especially on uh, plays that string to the outside like that. Tuskegee's divorce, Thomas was able to get there. It looked like he did get a grab with a face mask. Wasn't called, and then got up with a little bit of jarring and let the sideline know about it, Travis. Second and long, Alabama State, two receivers to the left, one to the right for Davis. He's got Bell in the backfield, fakes it to Bell. Pass is caught by Larry Brown. Brown carries two defenders down to the Alabama State 46-yard line for a first down. 
And that's just a simple dump pass because Brown was only two yards off the line of scrimmage when he caught it. That's we're we're going to go hurry up. Hate to cut you off. They're going to go race car. Not this is good. something we've been wanting to see. Here's Bell. Bell bounces off of one. He gets outside. That could have been a trouble for Tuskegee because Brown has 4-2 speed and was a shoestring away from a touchdown. Just had to get away from Ricky Norris from Tuskegee. We talked about him in the pregame, that safety, that, that standout returner player that they had. It was a battle of two great players. That time, Norris was able to get it. But you're right. If he gets away from Norris right there, he's got nothing but green daylight all the way down. Second and 11 for Tuskegee from the Al or, excuse me, Alabama State from their own 44. Davis sends Bell in motion. Let's see if he swings it out. Instead, he goes to the opposite side, goes to Hickson. Hickson tries to make Thomas miss, squirts away from him, gets to midfield. It'll bring third and about five for Alabama State. And that play has been there so far, and if it keeps working, if it ain't broke, keep doing it. So, you know, that right there for Hickson, the out route has been good here to the Alabama State side of the field, five up and out. Uh, you know, it's turning into nice plays. Now we're here in third and, third and manageable at third and five. Third and five for the Hornets. Ishmael Salim will be the receiver to Davis's right. He'll be the long receiver with trips to the left. Here's Davis. He'll look left. Now he looks middle. Here comes the pressure. Davis escapes. Gets to the 45. He was about to slide, and if he would have started his slide, he would have been a yard short. Instead, he gets that extra yard. First down, Alabama State to the Tuskegee 43. And, and that, at that particular for, uh, formation, uh, there was a mismatch with my, with, my, with my tight end, Brown. You know, they had the big, big linebacker out, out over him and uh, look for that later on. Here's Davis. He'll hand it to Bell. Bell straight up the middle. He'll get stacked up there after a short gain of about two. It brings up second and eight. And, Sean, I don't know if you realize this shit or not. I think – JC's favorite player for the Hornets is Larry Brown the third. That tight end. Yeah, he's a nice looking tight end. Great size on him, 6'4. But I want to touch on something you talked on the previous play about. The, when we talk about mental reps, right? You don't think mental reps matter. Last week, Kadarius Davis slid on a third, uh, third down run and absolutely we didn't get the first down. That time after watching the film, getting that mental rep, he went head forward and got the first down. Davis hands the bell and let me tell you, Bell was about six yards in the backfield and was about to suffer a six-yard loss. That 4-2 speed play just came into effect as he took a six-yard loss, turned it into a six-yard gain. Now to be third and short from the Tuskegee 36-yard line as the clock continues to run, 145 and counting. That was all individual effort on that play and speed. Got a lot of time on the play clock here. Setting them up right. Ten seconds left. I love how we're the tempo on offense so far. Bell up the middle. We'll see if he got it or if he's short. This is four down territory for Alabama State. 115 and counting here in the opening quarter. Hornets trail 7-0. Still trying to get our partner Rob Taylor to get on with us here in just a minute. We can hear Rob. We're just going to have to communicate, sending some smoke signals here in the first half. And did you all see that 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 series right there? It looks like as we, as we pick up the first down, they don't even have to measure it for Alabama State. 56 running in, but they settled in. That's what I meant. As a player, you're settling into the game at this point in the ball game. 55 seconds to play in the quarter. Davis sends Gray in motion. Goes to the right side, has Salim. Salim makes a man miss, makes a second man miss. Ishmael Salim, who had a big game against Tuskegee last year, picks up a first down. Down to the Tuskegee 21-yard line. Playmakers making plays. Again, can you make somebody miss? The red shirt, red shirt senior made two miss that time, partner. First down, Hornets. Here's Davis. Race car again. Gray up the middle. Play still going. Everybody's standing around. Gray picks up about three, and that might be the final play of the first quarter. And, guys, if it is, this drive started with 6.09 to play. There is a Tuskegee player down, so we'll talk through this. We'll stay here as there's only 10 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Also got an Alabama State offensive lineman down. This drive started 6.09 on the clock. 12 plays currently, 63 yards for Alabama State. They're just wearing down this Tuskegee defense. And I think they found something in the soft spot, in the soft part of that Tuskegee defense. They're dropping back, but and, and what our receivers are doing are just sitting down in that soft part of that zone 
and uh, the quarterback is doing a good job of recognizing that and finding his man. Yeah, Doug, you're absolutely right. That that weak side linebacker here, here and that cover two that Tuskegee's trying to run to keep us from going over the top of him is not getting out there into that soft spot of the zone. And so we're just settling down, whether it's on that out route we're hitting them right there or curling up that um, slot receiver or tight end uh, right there in that, in that okay. section. Darius Coles, defensive end for the Golden Tigers. Somebody from Tuskegee's side is going to try to overcompensate on that play as far as that we keep catching on them in that zone. We've got to recognize that and see where they're coming from so we right, exactly right, go over the top. Five seconds to play. They'll get a playoff. Ja'Cory Merritt fakes, gets the handoff. Touchdown, Alabama State. How do you do, Michael Jefferson from Kadarius Davis, the triple zero on the clock here in the first quarter. Kadarius Davis to Michael Jefferson. Extra point pending, 7-6, guys. Great throw from Kadarius Davis. And that's what Marshawn spoke about earlier, that big body. You see how he just used his big body and boxed him out like a basketball play, and Tuskegee uh, defensive back couldn't overcome it. I just love this kid, Jefferson. I mean, six foot four, long body guy, goes and catches the football. Big three star, almost three and a half star coming out of the Mobile area. We know the talent pool that comes out of there. Goes in and seals the touchdown, tying the ball game up on this kid. Hunter Hansen's extra point is up. His kick is good. And just like that, end of the first quarter, final play of the first quarter, Michael Jefferson. A 19 yard touchdown pass. From Kadarius Davis to number 19, the sophomore from Mobile. That's the end of the quarter. 7-7, your score. Back after this timeout, you listen to Alabama State football on the Hornet Sports Network. Yeah. Protected. CAI, Community Associations Institute, will give you the tools to protect your home and community. CAI is a nonprofit organization with resources for your board, community managers, and free information for homeowners like you. CAI at responsiblecommunities.com. Three, two, one, you're back. Welcome back to ASU Stadium here on the Alabama State University campus. 7-7 your score. Alabama State and Tuskegee tied as we go to the second quarter. Alabama State scored on that last play. Rashawn's favorite player, Michael Jefferson, with that 19-yard reception. Yeah, Michael Jefferson over the top, doing what he does best, and that's putting that big body in front of the smaller defensive back and going to get the football. Love the way with the seven-yard line. And we put a, uh, put a drive together and, you know, you had the big Tuskegee defensive lineman gasping for air at the end of that at the end of that drive. Yeah, they're trying to hurry up and hope that the sun goes down. But it's not going. I got news for him. It ain't going down before eight o'clock. <laughs> we had daylight savings time yet, so you're right. That heat's gonna definitely take a toll on him on this game. Still about an hour and forty five minutes away from sunset, and obviously they didn't pay attention to the weather forecast when it went up on the board here early in this game. But Tuskegee will be kicking into that sun. And this, is, this will play a little havoc on you. Even though the sun's behind you, you're still going to look up, go from dark to light to try to catch this kickoff. And this will be Hunter Hansen doing the kickoff duties. He'll kick off in the left hash for the Hornets. Alabama State moving right to the left. Hunter slips a little bit on that kick, gets it to about the six. Here's a Daryl Petway. And Petway gets absolutely crushed at about the 17. 
we'll try to get you who that player was for Alabama State as Tuskegee will take over first and ten. Nigel Schamberger, the guy that Coach Ely talked about, J.C., on that coaching show that was put in on that kickoff return team last week. That's the man he was talking about and just makes a big hit. And the number of that truck. Wow. Out of Pritchett, Alabama. When I was playing football here at, at Jeff Davis High School in Montgomery, we had to go down and play Blunt and and, and, uh, and Viger and those guys down there in Pritchett had to have a police escort because we know those guys were dangerous. <laughs> that yeah. time right there, Nigel Sandberger showed he's dangerous. <laughs> Jamarcus Ezel will go under center and eye formation. This is that good old Tuskegee football we're used to seeing. Now they can take it and then put it somewhere else because Torian Taylor goes right up the middle and gashes that Tuskegee defense. Yeah, that time he was able to slip through. Sometimes you see that, uh, you know, some those those runs pop like that whenever those defensive linemen get caught up in there, and then the linebackers get caught in the flow. So that time we were out of position right there with the linebackers getting caught up in the flow, and Taylor made us pay for it for the long run. First and ten. First and ten, Tuskegee. Here's Kenny Gant, Gant, left side. He'll be tackled there at about the 40, 41-yard line after a four-yard gain. And there's Lucky O.E. right there. Uh, we were wondering in pregame, was he going to be able to go with the shoulder, right? Uh, that time he was able to stand tall, seal the edge from the defensive end position for Alabama State, setting up basically no gain right there and a uh, long second down Second down play right here for Tuskegee. He had a big old Isaac Nixon was in on that play also. Uh, he just just clocked up the gap that time. Fine looking corner right there, and and and, uh, and Nixon. Excuse me, Keenan Keenan Isaac on on that play. I'm sorry. No. Here's Tuskegee right side. That'll be Kenny Gant brought down on a loss. He'll lose about four. And that was all set up by Alabama State linebacker, Darren Johnson. He got through there and almost uh, stopped that and caused a fumble. Tuskegee tried to run a, a type of option play right there on that toss. He got there a little bit earlier than the quarterback had expected, and so he, he rushed the pitch, which startled the, 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 the rhythm of the running back. And so as soon as the running back got the ball, he slipped and went down. There's Tuskegee. Third and 11 from the 36-yard line. Shotgun formation for the Golden Tigers. Here's Ezel. Back to pass, heavy pressure. Ezel uses his speed to get away from it. Brought down by Uvakius McGee. Devin Booker and Josh Hill both behind the play. Force Davis out of the pocket. Brings up a fourth down in a punting situation. Now this is going to be interesting because you know that, that defense was gassed. On the last drive that Alabama State had, if we could get the ball this time and sustain another drive like we did uh, on that scoring play, uh, it could be lights out for Tuskegee in the first half. It's just good to see Ivakis McGee running around out there healthy, isn't it? Fine-looking senior, redshirt senior, getting a chance to play a senior year in front of his home crowd. He's out of Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, that old Jeff Davis High School on Carter Hill Road I talked about earlier. But uh, <laughs> it's just good to see him running around making plays again. Good for him. Tuskegee in punt formation. Play clock hit zeros. It'll be a delay of game against the Colton Tigers. And speaking of Carter Hill Road, if you're familiar with ASU Stadium, that's the direction Arnis Huskick is about to kick the football towards Carter Hill Road. Tuskegee moving left to right, kicking it to that north end zone. And it's hard to say north and south because it's really east and west because the stadium's really not laid out straight north and south. But we'll go north and south because that's every way football stadium is built. We tried to work it out with the state. We couldn't get I-85 moved a little bit. So, uh, you know, we got what we got. <laughs> Here's the kick. It'll be Kobe Crab on the return. Crab at the 40. Crab at the 45, 47. First and 10, Alabama State coming up now from their 47-yard line for the Hornets as they look to try to take the lead back. Tell you how great that return was there, Travis. He returned that uh, almost four yards outside of where Tuskegee would have had the first down at. That's how far he returned it. Excellent job by that young man getting us some great field position and flipping the field back in our favor.
freshman get an opportunity to play today. Cooley Crabs, another freshman out of Alexander City, Alabama. Crab is a backup punt returner, backup cornerback as Gray goes up the middle, lowers his head, picks up about five. It'll be second and about six, we'll call it, from the Tuskegee 49. Here's Gray, right side. Tries to get away from the defender. Gets up one. It'll be third and manageable. It'll be third and five. For Tuskegee. I mean, for Alabama State in Tuskegee territory. Excuse me. Yeah, third and manageable. You're right. Right here on the other side. Well, excuse me, on the Tuskegee side of midfield. So, a lot of, lot of opportunities right here to go either way. You want to go with the football. You want to go with a quick... Uh, screen to the outside if you want to run a run play here. Got a lot of options as we come here with the bunch package. Three receivers set to the bottom of the field. Here's Davis. He'll drop back to pass. Davis goes up the middle, spins, picks up enough for the first down. Let's see if it's a right foot or a left foot. If it's a right foot spot, it'll be a first down. They're going to wave it first and 10, Alabama State, from the Tuskegee 43-yard line. Yeah, I think I, I think uh, the quarterback uh, was picking run all the way in that play. You know, he just uh, that was a draw all the way. It looked like a draw. You're right. It looked like a draw all the way right there. He picked it up. So right there, Alabama State showing Tuskegee a little bit of their own medicine. We saw Tuskegee early coming out with the three receiver bunch package to the bottom to kind of do smoke and mirrors thing. Alabama State's coming and doing their own version of it, showing three receiver sets to the Alabama State sideline, but running away from that to try and get to the soft spot of the defense. Quick play for Alabama State that time. They tried to go race car again. Tuskegee was able to read it and bring down Gray for a no gain. It'll be second and 10 Hornets with 10-14 and counting here in the opening quarter. Here's Davis. He'll drop back to pass. Evades the rush. He goes deep down the middle of the field. Michael Jefferson! How do you do, Michael Jefferson? Two touchdowns on two receptions. Jefferson, an absolutely beautiful ball from Kadarius Davis that time, guys. And Jefferson, he's used his speed that time, used his body the first, used his speed the second time to get some separation. KD did an excellent job that time of keeping his eyes downfield. He avoided the rush, and he, and he locked in on his receiver, and he didn't give up on the play. He, he followed the play all the way through, and six points. He had your man there open down the middle of the field as well, and Brown, the big tight end, so it was pick one <laughs> on that play. Two post routes. That time he chose the post over the top to Jefferson for a big touchdown. Hanson's kick is up, and it is good with 10 minutes exactly. Remaining here in the first half, 14-7, Alabama State leads Tuskegee. Back after this 90-second timeout, you're listening to Alabama State football on the Hornet Sports Network. Try your purpose at Alabama State University. Choose from more than 60 degree programs from undergraduate courses in computer technology, education, theater arts, business, and the sciences to high demand graduate degrees in physical therapy, social work, microbiology, and more. Our world-class faculty is ready to help you reach your goal. You'll also enjoy a vibrant campus life and Division I athletics. Come to our campus. Let us show you why it's always a great time to be a Hornet. For more information or to complete an application, visit us online at alasu.edu or 334-229-4291. Alabama State University. The time is now. Hey, bro, you come to the game later? Nah, man, my girl just texted me, told me you from home straight after class. You always have to do what she say. Yeah, man. Otherwise, she's going to fight. I grab her hands to keep her off me. Dude, she is abusing and controlling you. What I look like being controlled by a female? Ah, uh, you look like you look enough. Your students, students representing ASU, Huntington, Tuskegee, and Troy. If you're a victimizer or if you see something, say something. No matter where you go, you're going to get help. For more info, call 334-229-6767, 24-7. Three, two, one, you're back. That 
Alabama State Spirit going through ASU Stadium now as the Hornets lead 14 to 7 on a deep ball from Kadarius Davis to Michael Jefferson. Jefferson, two receptions, two touchdowns. A five play, 53 yard drive, eating up a minute and 56 seconds, culminating with a 43 yard pass from Davis to Jefferson. Yeah, and Jefferson is the recipient of that touchdown belt they have down on the sideline. It's always good times when they're playing at old Bama State Spirit. <laughs> you know the stadium is rocking and the team is leading, so let's keep on playing it. 14-7 <laughs> Alabama State has answered with 14 unanswered after that Tuskegee score to start things off. That's Hunter Hansen set to kick off again from the left hash. Hansen. We'll send this ball deep down that left sideline. It's fielded by Petway at the seven. Petway cut, makes one cut, gets hit again by Schamberger. So Schamberger inserted in last week against UAB on that kickoff team. Makes two tackles on back-to-back -back kickoffs. We had a guy just like that that was a kickoff specialist in Lafayette Simpkins, your frat brother, yes, sir. right, of, of yes, making sci five <laughs> Back when we were playing, he was just like that. He made it his mission to come down that That's when you can have the wedges. It's illegal now. His job was to come down and blow the wedge up, and he did a great job of that. That's what this kid reminds me of, just, just coming down there, fired up, and making a play on kickoff. He reminds me of a kid named Leroy Barron who played for Coach Houston Markham here at Alabama State. He was a wedge buster. That's right. Tuskegee late coming off the sideline. Alabama State late coming off the sideline. And Tuskegee tried to catch Alabama State off guard, unable to do so. And they're going to get a penalty, it looks like. The only good thing about being late on defense onto the field is if the offense is later than you, the flag goes on the <laughs> offense. So that was the case there. Both teams coming on the field late. Unfortunately for Tuskegee, the flag goes on against them. But well, fortunately for us. And they're talking to the quarterback right now, Jamarcus Ezel. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Let's see. Oh, I guess they're going to say he was calling timeout at the same time. So they'll give Jamarcus Ezel a timeout instead of delay a game. So either way, it's either a timeout for Tuskegee. So they only have, what, one left now? Or a delay a game. And I'd rather Tuskegee only have one timeout left going into these final ten minutes. Yeah. And, I, and I think what happened on that play, uh, Ezel was asking for the timeout from the back judge, but the white hat way downfield through the flag. So he didn't see him asking for the timeout, and that's how that confusion came in, and that's why they talked it over and gave Tuskegee the timeout. Quick 30-second timeout for Tuskegee. And again, they run out on the field. Not everybody's ready, and here comes that Alabama State defense. You're going to see a lot of that for teams like Tuskegee that hadn't played and been off. So they're not used to working off of that, those timeouts and those that, that time, the game clock and all that. You just can't simulate that stuff very well in practice. Pistol formation for Jamarcus Ezel. Ezel drops back to pass. Big hit from Natron Culpepper. Fumble is picked up and then fumbled again. Tuskegee fighting for it. Did Christian Clark come up with it? Let's see. Natron Culpepper absolutely just blew up. Jamarcus Ezel on that play. He's slow to get up. An offensive lineman loses his helmet. There's a scrum down in the end zone. Big Christian Clark. Let's see. We're waiting on the call. Touchdown. Christian Clark, how do you do? There is a penalty at the 21-yard line. If it stands, how about that big hit from Natron Culpepper? They may call target on, but from here, Culpepper actually lowered his shoulder. And Jamarcus Ezel took that one in the chest. Well, I'm hoping that uh, for, for our sake that that's, that's what the call is. And there was also a skirmish at the 20-yard line uh, with one of the uh, defenses, with one of the defensive linemen, their offensive line. So the official comes over to talk to head coach Donald Hill Ely. The penalty's on Tuskegee. So that's what they're going to do. The penalty's on Tuskegee. And we'll see. I'm, I'm believing that's what the call is. We got the coaches right to our left. We'll be able to tell as Travis Pearson went out to talk to Ely as well. <laughs> yeah, it looked like that um, Cole Pepper did get his head out of the way of the quarterback's helmet and hit him with the shoulder. So uh, I can't see targeting right here. So your guess is as good as mine. Here's the issue I think that they're talking about. They still haven't signaled touchdown. We called it from here. 
There's still no touchdown been signaled, and a lot of that reason is, is that ball was fumbled forward. But if it's knocked out by a Tuskegee player and then goes forward, there's nothing you can do about it. And I think that's where a lot of the discussion is going to come in. So we'll see. And they may be talking about multiple penalties here, maybe an ejection or two, but we're just going to leave that to the official. Here comes the call. They're going to say hands to the face, and that flag came in after the hit from Natron Culpepper. So that flag came in awfully late to be a hands to the face penalty. Wow. The hands to the face happened after the ball in the end zone, and when the hands, put, when hands to the face uh, penalty actually got called. I, I don't understand. Right there, uh, type of. Uh where it's a set play after, right after, after the all, all of that happened after the fumble the, hit, the initial hit that is a it'll hit. be a fumble. when that is two to play after that penalty call uh -huh. they bring out a quarterback i think he doesn't he uh since he was injured on the pre the rain quarterback the left-hander who came in through 18 touchdowns last year for the Golden Tigers, the lefty. He'll hand it off to Taylor right side. Taylor bottled up by Jeffrey. And loses yardage on that play. It'll be a second down. From the 35. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Hill coming up from his uh, safety position right uh, to make a huge play. He was sitting in the slot. He was up close tight to the line of scrimmage in the slot. Looked like he was trying to play. Man, read it very well. Came up and tackled tail in the backfield for a loss. Second and long here as Taylor gets up to the right side of the Alabama State defense for about six yard gain, uh, pushed out by a host of. Uh, Alabama State defenders right there led by Keenan Isaac uh, over there on the sideline. And so now it sets up third and eight right here for Alabama State on defense. Still a lot of time for us in this game. So we don't want to get, uh, you know, too high on the horse right now to allow Tuskegee back into it. This is a huge money down. First of the first time I got a chance to say that this year for 20 of the 2019 season. Money down right here, third and 39. Third down. Here's Doremus. He left. He's going to try to lob it over two defenders and hits Peyton Ramsey. Ramsey makes a cut. Touchdown saving tackle by Josh Hill as Ramsey made the catch. It'll be a big game for the Golden Tigers. Alabama State Territory waiting on them. Well, that time our defensive back got caught looking in the backfield, you know, when the quarterback started to scramble and they gave up on the play. The receiver did what he was supposed to. He kept running. And the quarterback saw him and uh, play over the top. The, the safety also, like you said, was caught with the eyes in the backfield. He thought that the quarterback was going to continue to run. Instead, he pulled up and threw the ball over his head. As a safety, you're always taught, stay deeper than the deepest receiver. Here's Doremus. Got a whistle and another delay of game call against Tuskegee. How about that for the Golden Tigers? They've gotten a lot of delay game calls, and yes, it is their first game, but still, lining up is the fundamental part of the game of football. It's so much going on, though, at the line of scrimmage, either side of the ball, especially when you're in a new stadium. you got to find out where the clocks are. you got to get used to finding that game clock. Sometimes they're buried in the corner of the end zone, and so trying to find that and get the play call in and read the defense, that time was too much for Tuskegee. Here's Taylor outside from Doremus. He'll be pulled down for a loss. 
With 7.16 to play here in the opening half, it'll be second and about 15 oh, now for the Golden Tigers. Is it me or is it that Tuskegee uh, has not run a, a running play to the right side this, this second quarter? You're right. I, I, I hadn't noticed that until you brought that up. Everything to the left. And sometimes it's just all about matchups. Uh, you know, I, I don't know on, the, on that left side, they feel more comfortable with some of the off offensive linemen over there, and so that's why they're doing that. Uh, you know, I'd be trying to run away from big old Christian Clark myself. <laughs> <laughs> so wherever he's at, I'm going the opposite direction. Here's Doremus, drops back to pass. Pressure coming wide, open receiver. Out at the 15, ball is caught. Still on his feet for Tuskegee, fighting for yardage. As Phillip Brown picks up a first down, it'll be first and goal for Tuskegee at the Alabama State, too. And that's what concerned me and you, partner, there in uh, Doremus, which was his ability, escapability, we should say, because he's more of the agile quarterbacks of the two, can make plays happen and extend plays. That time he did, and now they're at uh, first and short, first and goal. Here's Taylor. Taylor walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Tuskegee. Yeah, Tuskegee has found something on that left side. You know, because everything they're running is on the left side. And it could be because uh, the quarterback is a left hand. Because he's doing he's throwing all his passes to the left side and all his handoffs are going to the left side. And they actually found something there. So uh, can we just talk about this 14 point swing? I know it's 14 to 13 right now, pinning the kick. But how big of a call was that? The hands of the face early in this drive, hands to the face. It, put, it took points off the board. We recovered a fumble in the end zone. It deflates you defensively when you think you score, and then you have to come right back out and play on defense. But now you're going to put the ball back in the offense's hands as this ball goes through with 619 to play. 619 remaining in the first half. Alabama State 14. Time out on the field. We'll take it with them. You're listening to Alabama State football on the Hornet Sports Network. My name is Bobby. I'm a veteran and lost my leg to a roadside bomb. My victory was going from a wheelchair to becoming a weightlifting champion. I'm Sam. I'm a veteran. My victory was finding a career I can be proud of and supporting my family. America's veterans are on their most important tour. Hey, Jay, uh, Travis said 90 seconds. I'm a veteran. My victory was going from homeless to home. At DAV, we're on a mission to help veterans get the benefits they've earned. I'm a veteran, and my victory was finishing my education. DAV offers veterans of all generations a lifetime of support for victories great and small. My victory was proving your disability is not a limitation. My victory was getting my service dog and new best friend. We help more than the 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 support more victories for veterans go to dav.org of Alabama State University, your FM 90.7 WVASHD, Montgomery, Alabama. Welcome back to ASU Stadium, 14-14, your score, 14-point swing for Tuskegee. An apparent touchdown, an obvious touchdown by Alabama State, call back for hands to the face, late penalty. Charged against the Hornets on that drive, and Tuskegee goes right down and scores, but how about this? Deron Bell now back deep with Ja'Cory Merritt on the kickoff team. This is what they've done. If they see something back deep, they'll rest one guy to rest his legs. They'll put Bell back deep to use his speed. Let's see if they kick it to Merritt to the freshman. This freshman is electric on that right side. Travis Jerome, Sean Sanders, J.C. Coleman. We'll have Robert Taylor on with us shortly to talk to head coach Donald Hill Ely at the half. Here's a kick from Husky. And they kick it to Merritt. Merritt at the four. Merritt at the 10. Merritt at the 20. Merritt hits the wall of defenders, but pushes his way up across the 25 to the 26. 
Freshman lowered his head and picked up a couple extra yards for Alabama State. Yeah, he showed a lot of toughness and grit just running up into that uh, line right there. Sometimes the freshman's a little bit of a blur. It's happening so fast. So I look to see him finding the seams a little bit better as he gets used to it back there. And Bell will actually be the running back with Kadaris Davis. No, he'll go to the sideline late now. Here's Ezra Gray. And Davis will have three receivers. One of those will be his tight end. And actually, they'll go four wide now as the one goes in late. Four wide for Davis. Two to the short side of the field, which is the right side. Two to the left, the wide side of the field. One of those is Moses Marshall, the tight end. Here's Davis back deep over the middle to Marshall. Marshall almost makes the play, but a heck of a play from Tuskegee that time defensively. And I like to see Marshall maybe bend that over just a little bit away from the safety, give us a little bit of space. That way, Six is not able to come and try to break that pass play up on their post. So Marshall, the backup tight end, ran right down the seam. It'll be a second and 10 now for Alabama State. That time, Kaderis Davis drops back to pass, finds number one Hickson on the post route over the middle. They went right back to it, and that he did exactly what we saw in the previous play what, that we needed for the correction, which was to bend it flatter. A lot of times, our coach would tell us at the receiver position, hey, if the safety sitting there is on, you got to cross his face. You got to come flat on that. Hickson did that and picked up a first down for the Hornets almost at midfield. First and 10 from the Alabama State 45 yard line, 525 to play. Here in the opening half, here's Davis. Fakes the hand off to Gray over the middle of Marshall. Marshall is a, is a bit of a hybrid tight end when you look at him in stature. Not as big as Larry Brown, but makes the catch, and Alabama State going to go quickly back to the line again. And, and this race car is similar to the Auburn, similar to the Arkansas, similar to the How Mummy kind of offense as they all came from the same page. Here's Gray. Gray will try to string it out left, avoids the first tackle, tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, and here's a flag. Flag comes in late. Little extracurricular activity from number six, uh, Tuskegee. And there's an injured Tiger on the field as well. We'll wait and we'll see if it gets called the right way this time. You don't want to, we've learned not to make an early call on a penalty <laughs> after that last time. <laughs> Personal foul, that'll help Alabama State out. So it'll be a first down for the Hornets as Ezra Gray lost about six inches on the play. And then I'll take advantage of that 15-yard penalty with 4.54 to play here in the half. Yes, sir. You got all your plays at your disposal with, uh, at your disposal, excuse me, with 4.54 in the game, no rest and you're on the favorable side of the field. Those of you watching on BamaStateSports.com, directing everyone there, if you can, to go watch as well. We have three special presentations at halftime. You might want to see them, plus we'll have the bands on for you as well there. We try to make sure that you can see every portion of the game or hear every portion of the game. Here's Davis, play action. Stays in the pocket, hits Jeremiah Hickson. How do you do? Jeremiah Hickson falls into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama State on a 26-yard strike from Davis to Hickson. That 429 to play. That time, when the, uh, Hickson set him up. We have been hitting him on the post in back-to-back -back plays early in the series. That time, he faked the post and went to the post corner, back to the flag of the defense, full, totally full to safety. Perfect play, play, perfect play call as well by the coach Don Ely to get the Hornets in the end zone and go up 20 to 14 in the second half. I mean, first half. You know, uh, one thing this team has is character. They showed it last week against UAB, and they could have actually gotten on, gotten down as he missed his uh, kick. This kick was partially blocked. Uh, they showed a lot of resilience after this 14 point turnaround, after the call down that was taken away, the points were taken off the board, and they came back and showed that they can strike real fast. Then there's a flag on, on the play. 4.29 remaining here in the opening half. Timeout on the field. It is going to be a personal foul, unsportsmanlike penalty against Tuskegee. He points towards Alabama State, calls it against Tuskegee. 
With 429 to play here in the half, 20 to 14, the extra point was blocked back after this timeout. You listen to Alabama State football on the Hornet Sports Network. Rob, can you hear me down there? Oh. Hey, will you stay any closer? Robert Taylor. And 70% of older Americans will need some form of long-term care services as they age. I'll go down to him anyway. I'll watch him. Create your strategy for aging so you can stay in shock. Well, you know, 50 years, your long-term care makes it easier to figure out where you want to live, who will care for you, and the newest ways to cover the costs. Long-term care. players down here on the sideline cheering on these current Hornets and uh, this is a big reunion happening down here on the field today it's just uh, it's just magical seeing all these guys down here today and uh, cheering on they want to be out there on the field themselves but only the players that are on the roster for 2019 can be out there today but uh, it's great to see former players of course like the Rock, Rock Dillon, Eddie Robinson just to name a few uh, Kiwan Riley is here. So many more down here on the sideline today, guys. Thanks, Rob. It'll be Hunter Hansen kicking off from midfield with 429 to play here in the opening half after that personal foul call against Tuskegee. The Hornets lead 20 to 14. And JC, I know me and you were in the booth last week. Let's go ahead and mark that down. How big is that kick going to be? And we'll talk about it later. Hopefully, it won't come into play. Here's Hansen. Hansen's kickoff. We'll go through the back of the end zone, and it will be first and 10 for Tuskegee. Well, you know, uh, Rob Taylor was talking about all the alumni players down on the, on the sideline down there, but uh, we've got a pretty good one uh, in the booth with us here. Sean. Hey, I appreciate that. Part. <laughs> I had to look up and see who we were talking about. <laughs> but, no, I appreciate that. The Rock was actually doing my air as well, so uh, you know, I enjoyed playing with four seven. <laughs> we called him back then, man. Rock would, would, would tell you how he was a terror back there out of safety. <laughs> First and 10, Tuskegee from their own 25. 429 to play here in the opening half. Ahmad DeRama stays in at quarterback. He throws this one left. That ball up in the air. Did he make the catch? Holy cow, what a catch by Tuskegee. On that sideline over the head of Keenan Isaac. That's Kendrick Green making a one-handed grab with the left hand on the outer boundary. I'm going to see if they review that one because he looked like he may have been bobbling, but we can't see from here. But Tuskegee huddles up. So this will give those replay officials some time to look at it. And they're not rushing. They're very confident that he made the call. That ball seemed like he just stuck to his shoulder pad in that one arm, didn't it? Man. Oh, Ten, on the, Ten on the play clock. Here's the Ramos. Turns and hands to Taylor. Taylor fights through a tackle, and Keenan Isaac able to hang on and pulls Taylor down. And Taylor's slow to get up, and his helmet comes off in the meantime. A three-yard game, maybe a four-yard game for Taylor with 341 remaining. Now, J.C., what you've done now is, you see, you got all those letter winners down on the field. You got Mashawn. You talk about how we got a great one. We're going to have to tie Mashawn to the chair here at half. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't disappear and go down there with all yeah, those alumni. Yeah, go down and start uh, reunioning. <laughs> well, it may not be a 44740 no more, but I might be able to run a 48 down there and get down there and say hi right quick and get back. <laughs> Here's Doramus. Doramus. Pitch play. Tackle made out there on the edge by Aaron Pope on the Tuskegee running back. There again, uh, everything to the left. Since this quarterback came in, every play Tuskegee has ran has gone to their left. Aaron Pope coming up from a safety position, finally looking senior out of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And he did what a senior is supposed to do, come up in the open field and make the tackle. Setting up uh, Tuskegee for a third and long here uh, on this uh, about two minutes and 40 seconds and count left in the, in the half. Third and six, Tuskegee from their own 
from the Alabama State 41. Here's DeRamus. He looks right, throws right. Catch made by Hodges. Hodges gets away from the first tackle. Stiff arms his way down inside the 20 to about the 17. It'll be first and 10 Tuskegee with two and a half to play on. Guys, this is a big possession for Alabama State. Tuskegee gets the ball coming out of the locker room. You don't want to give up any points going into the locker room. And, and this guy, Stephen Hodges, I, I remember watching him at Park Cross. And he, he was a beast when he played high school football here, right here in Montgomery. You know, but it doesn't seem like it's been four years since he graduated. Culpepper was kind of confused from the boundary corner position, too. He, it looked like he didn't know what the down and distance was. He was about nine yards off uh, at that time of the catch instead of up tight because it was third and six, and Tuskegee made him pay. Reverse coming for the Golden Tigers. Read perfectly by Alabama State. Nicholas Terry stayed home. Jeffrey Hill comes in late, but he was pushed by a Tuskegee player. So no flag, a loss of about four. Let's see where they put it down. It'll be a loss of four back to the 21, so it brings up second and 14, clock running, 140, and this is even bigger because Tuskegee had to waste that time out on, to avoid the delay game. They've only got one to stop the clock. And I think that play was set up with Tuskegee doing all this running to the left. This time they reversed it back to the right, hoping Alabama State would think the same thing, obviously. To Ramos, pistol formation from the right hash, moving left to right on your screen. Doremus into the end zone, has Hodges. Hodges has it knocked away by Jeffrey Hill, a hand fighting. They're going to get Hill. Let's see if it's holding or passing. They're going to call pass interference against Jeffrey Hill. They let him get away with that early in this game. They let him get away with it last week, and now they call it down here on the goal line. First and goal because the foul was in the end zone. First and goal, Golden Tigers with 1.12 to play here in the first half. At that time, the DB got, Hill got in no man's land, and that was in the trail, and he panicked a little bit, and he really didn't have to. That ball up in the, in the air is going to give you time to recover. He's fast enough to recover on that. He got a little startled uh, in that play and, and reached out and grabbed. The referee saw it and, and called the uh, pass in the field. They still haven't spotted the ball yet, so nobody knows where they're going. Tuskegee comes out of the huddle about the seven. Alabama State standing on the eight. And here comes the ball now as both teams are lined up. Supposed to be at the two. And Agamemnon spotted at the six. He just said it was going to be spotted at the two because the foul occurred in the end zone. They've got first and two on the scoreboard, first and two on stats, first and two on the PA, and they mark it at the six, but we'll take it. First and goal, Tuskegee from the Alabama State six. Here's Taylor. Taylor goes right. Doesn't matter if it was six or two. Torian Taylor, a hard man to tackle, into the end zone for his second touchdown for the Golden Tigers. And the game is tied now at 20 with 107 to play in the opening half. That time, Rockius McGee got caught in the uh, open field right there and got shook out of his shoes by Taylor. Nice-looking nice nifty back for Tuskegee. He was able to make, a, make us pay right there. Did you ever think when this game started, O'Connor, oh, we'd be looking at a possible shootout? Wow. We're talking about some offensive fireworks in this first half. We'll talk more about that in the second half. Some of these games that have just been absolute. Just points on the board. Timeout called by Alabama State. We'll stay here. It'll be a 30-second timeout with 107 to play. And I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but they ran every play. Decide, except one, with the exception of one play to the left. So that leads me to believe they, they've actually found something on that side on that side, and they're trying to exploit it because, you know, since this guy came in the game, every play has been going, uh, to, except for the reverse. They tried to reverse to come back the other way. So I think coach, that's something Coach Ely is going to have to, uh, and I'm pretty sure these, these coaches upstairs see that, and uh, they can address that. Uh, for the, the you know, the next week for Day at ASU Stadium as the Hornets take on Kennesaw State. Uh, just to uh, elaborate a little bit more on that, it seems like Christian Clark is lining up to the uh, right side of Tuskegee's offensive line. I think they're trying to run away from Christian Clark. Here's the extra point attempt by Husky. A couple players move, no flag. Extra point is up. Extra point is good. And Tuskegee takes a one-point lead, 21 to 20, with 107 to play. Here in the opening half, we'll stay here for these final 67 seconds at the break. 
See if Robert Taylor can get it. Coach Donahill Ely going into the locker room, and then we'll send it back to Jay, Jay Holsey in studio control for the halftime report and get you some scores from around the country. We're on the Hornet Sports Network, but right now Tuskegee leads 21-20 here from ASU Stadium, 107 to play here in the opening half. And, guys, it's one of those things. It's just back and forth, back and forth. Shootout indeed, and uh, you, you also caught it earlier. I'm going to have to go uh, play your lotto number this week because you <laughs> talked about that missed kick from Hunter Hansen coming back to bite us uh, in the game, and Tuskegee was able to execute. So now we got our eyes. It changes the urgency, so to speak, on these scores. Which score do we pick to go for two? There's a lot of thought that has to go into that, uh, you know, depending on where you are in the game, how much time, and what they've been doing to us. So. That is a huge miss uh, that could come back to bite us later on in the game, JC. You know what? Every time we make a every time we make a stop or an apparent stop, we always get a penalty. It's always a penalty to bail Tuskegee out. So if we can eliminate the penalty, uh, we we got this game. So Bell goes over and talks to Merritt. I'm gonna call a big gain on this kickoff return. Let's see which way they kick it. Both guys standing at about the eight. Merritt. Go back to the end zone. This is the first time the Husky gets the ball into the end zone. Alabama State will take over first and 10 from the own 25. Mashawn, I hate to tell you this. If you're going to play my lotto numbers, you're only going to have to play them on Saturday because Monday through Sunday through Friday, I'm not very good. <laughs> Two weeks in a row on Saturday, I've been able to call some stuff. There you go. So, so the moral of the story is go play on Saturday. Okay? Go play on Saturday. Just go ahead and call me before you get here, gotcha. and I'll tell you which ones to play. I got you. I got you. And send you a check in the mail. <laughs> yep, I expect I expect 55 percent okay, before. Okay, all right, <laughs> man, you're expensive. <laughs> Here's Kadarius Davis, four receiver set. We've seen this two minute offense before. We saw it last week, and it worked well until that ball went off the face mask of Jeremiah Hickson. Here's Davis buying some time, still buying some time. Now he'll throw it away out of bounds. Wise decision. By Davis, all of his receivers were covered up. He had a couple maybe that were breaking open, but instead of taking a loss that time, Davis throws it out of bounds. Mental reps, mental reps right there. You're right. He got outside the pocket. No offers allowing him down the field. Surveyed it. Decided to throw it out of bounds. Nobody's hurt there. Still got 58 seconds left in the half. I'll go ahead and, and spoil the halftime for those folks listening at home that won't be able to see it. Michael Johnson, the former Cincinnati Bengal, is here. He'll present $100,000 to each school. His father went to Alabama State. His mother went to Tuskegee. And I'll tell you about the other wow. special guests that we got here at halftime. Here's Kadaris Davis. Hands it off to Gray. Gray is bottled up at about the 27. So it'll be a third and eight coming up for Alabama State as the clock continues to tick. We also have the bronze bomber, Deontay, Deontay Wilder, will be here. He will be honored at halftime and be presented to the folks here at home as well as, well as Miss ASU. So, Celebrity packed event here at the Labor Day Classic. And then we got a phone call from Titus Howard right before the game, right as we were coming into the booth. So folks around here just really love the Labor Day Classic. Here's Davis. Davis will take the sack, and let's see if Tuskegee calls their last time out. 14 seconds remaining on the clock. They will call the timeout. And Tuskegee uses their last one with seven as the clock continues to run. And we just talked about it the play before uh, the naturalization of Davis of getting outside the pocket and throwing it away. And that play took an unnecessary sack. You'll see what happens. Both teams are heading to the locker room. Officials are blowing the whistle. As Miss ASU walks out to the 50, we told you she was going to be on her at the half. Miss ASU says she's ready to play. <laughs> Miss Cooper, or Miss ASU, along with former student athlete, the SGA president, David Whitlow goes out with her. But while we were talking about the shootout, Mishan, last year's game was 26 to 20. That game went to overtime, 46 points combined. We're at 41 right now. You have to go back to 2012, the first game in the stadium. The two teams combined for 52. They combined for 51 back in 2011. But you go all the way back to 2007, you want to talk about a shootout, 64 to 58 in the Turkey Day Classic. Wow. 
and I'm not sure what happened over there in that Tuskegee tunnel, but somebody's down over there, and that, when the team started going, not sure what happened. Can't tell if it's a player, a trainer, or what. We'll try to find out for you and let you know over there in that Tuskegee tunnel. Here's Craven to punt, and somebody forgot. Oh, actually, that's Rob Taylor standing right beside the head linesman. So for those of you listening at home, that was the official's whistle, timeout called by Alabama State on the play. As we told you, the heat was going to be a factor as you look out over the stadium. Got several first responders here. I think what happened in that tunnel, uh, the trainers were taking their equipment out and they dropped the equipment uh, being and the stuff spilled out. So it looked like they were working on a, working on a person, but they were actually putting stuff back in the bin. So instead of a man down, we had a bin down. Yeah, bin down. <laughs> so I got distracted by a bin is what you're trying to tell me. No, partner, that means you were on it. You, you were, were on it. You everything were, you were that's on going it. on yes. the stadium locked in. Sun continues to set in the face of Tuskegee on that other sideline. We'll see what kind of adjustments Alabama State makes in the locker room as Anthony Craven goes back to punt again. He'll roll right. He'll get the punt off. It'll hit at the 45. It'll bounce at about the 50. Let's see if they let it run out of bounds. They do. Tuskegee will have one shot at the end zone here with four seconds and this is when you hold your breath in these kind of games because anything can happen in a rivalry contest anything can happen in alabama state tuskegee with four seconds on the clock you know i think that last drive i think alabama state was content with to letting the clock go uh, let the clock run out and and what they should have done they should have actually ran the brand the ball and let the clock run out because if they were not going to try to strike down field then there was no need to even take that loss on that sack and that's why we're in this situation with tuskegee now yeah, you, you can't take the sack in that situation. Uh, Davis is going to learn from that and, and continue to grow. So Tuskegee will come out of victory formation, but Alabama State's not going to fall for it. They're going to send Josh Hill and Aaron Pope about 40 yards from scrimmage. Here's DeRamus. He'll nail it, and that'll do it for the first half. We'll get out to Rob Taylor on the sideline and see if he can catch up with head coach Donald Hill Ely. Rob on you. All right, guys, we're trying to uh, get through the players here and get a few comments from Coach as he makes his way into the locker room to talk with the guys. We'll get out of the way, make sure that the fan has uh, has room to, to talk. Coach, a tight ball game the first half. Your thoughts, what you like at this like? Well, I mean, we're in position defensive. We just got to find a way to make the play on the ball. Those guys are just making uh, plays. Uh, every catch that they've had, we've had guys in position got to make plays and then offensively we can't stall we got to uh, get the ball down the field and make it happen all right thanks a lot coach all right you heard it from coach himself the guys are making plays he's talking about the other guys they're making plays we're making plays as well but we can't stall got to keep moving guys so that'll do it for the first half guys and we come back after we get send it back to jay holsey and studio control we'll analyze the first half talk about the second half and get things set halftime here 21 20 tuskegee you're listening to Alabama State Football on the Hornet Sports Network. My grandfather served in World War II. Spending time with him were the best memories of my life. I became a physician at VA because of my grandfather, so I can help others like him. I can't imagine working with better doctors or a more dedicated staff. I'm fulfilling my life's mission with the help of my team and thanks to these veterans. I'm proud to be a doctor at VA and proud to honor my grandfather every day. Search VA Careers to find out more. Dad, we need to talk. Huh. Can we just enjoy the drive? If you're not going to listen to me, who will you listen to? Jeffrey. <laughs> Marsha Gate Harden, what, what? Eyes on the road, Dad. What, 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 what are you doing? What, what are you, what are you, what are you doing in my back seat? How did you get in here? You're getting older. Not that old. Your brain's changing. It's natural. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Honey, I've got experience with this. Jeffrey, brain health is all about making the most of your brain as you age and helping to reduce some of the risks to your brain. Really? Now that's interesting. So, you'll talk to her about this, but not me. Marsha Gay Harden? Wh where did she go? Learn what you can do to help keep your brain healthy at brainhealth.gov. Did she... Did, uh, oh, she didn't say goodbye and I would... Visit brainhealth.gov. What would happen if you didn't follow the established path? If you did the unexpected? Would you feel 
see. Could you explain that helping the people of Peru improve their own community would also have an effect on your own? Or assist you, an entrepreneur in Ukraine, to launch your small business by creating a support group in Malawi for children orphaned by AIDS? What if you established your own path, one that others might follow? Would you rather make your own way or spend your life saying, what if? Life is calling you. How far will you go? Peace Corps. Find out more. Call 1-800-424-8580. Or go to peacecorps.gov. On my first patrol, my adrenaline was pumping. Always on high alert. After a while, it takes a toll. I was counting the days till I came home to my family. Finally, a day arrived. But then I realized... Things were different. I had trouble focusing and relating to things the way I used to. I decided to reach out. Once I started making connections, things began to turn around. Find resources and support at maketheconnection.net. Make the connection. Love or unlove? Running or red? Old or vintage? When you donate your unwanted car to WBAS, we'll make good use of it by turning it into proceeds to support great programming. And it's real easy to do. Call our toll-free number, 877-WBAS-123, and speak to our representative who will walk you through the entire process in just minutes. Or go online to www.wbasfm.org. Welcome back to the Hornet Sports Network Halftime Show. I'm Jay Holsey, and uh, right now the score is 21-20 in favor of Tuskegee in the Labor Day Classic. Earlier this week, our very own Mel Marshall had a chance to interview the Director of Alumni Relations, Reverend Cromwell Handy, who was also the pastor of the Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church, to interview him and talk to him about what he does and what alumni relations is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, it's halftime. And our halftime special guest today or tonight is Cromwell Handy, director of ASU's Alumni Affairs. Also, I got a show on WBAS called Promises of God at 845 every Sunday. And also pastor of the Dexter King Memorial Baptist Church. How are you doing, Mr. Handy? I'm doing great, doing great. And I thank you for having me here. And thank you for being here. Because I knew that probably right now you're out there watching that game and, and got a special <laughs> prayer you're sending up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, Director of Alumni Affairs at Alabama State University. Okay, Pastor of King Memorial Baptist Church. Man, you got a lot of help. Absolutely, but you know God would only put only do only do what you can bear. So we I continue to stay strong and continue to do the only thing I can while I am here as long as I can. Okay, let's go back to the earlier beginning. I understand yes. that it's five of you. Yes, that's right. Well, three boys and one two girls. Three boys and two girls. Okay. Let's see, one of the girls is a school teacher, one of the boys is a school teacher. And, and one of the girls, I also understand what one is in Cleveland or Ohio, who's a pastor too. All right, uh, she's in Indianapolis, Indiana. A pastor there with the AMU Zion Church right there. Okay, and then Ron Handy's brother. Yes, sir. Man, you big time. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I know him, I'm big time. <laughs> you big time. And, um, and, and to get to it, all of that, you know, you know your family is uh, from Ron uh, uh, W.C. Handy. That's right. That's right. The son of Paul Ron. I mean, and that goes back as W.C. Handy is the father of Jack. Considered the father of the blues, yeah. Oh, blues, Marshall, okay. Okay. Hill Street Blues and, and Memphis, Tennessee. Ended up in New York. Uh, was most uh, well known for his writing ability. Not necessarily his, his uh, prowess in uh, playing music. He was a trumpet player. Uh, but, uh, but he was well known for his compositions and the writing of jazz. And so he started a publishing company many years ago. Okay. 
and your family. It's from Montgomery. Well, now my, my, my first, let me let me let me back up and give a shout out to my dad, uh, who, who's uh, who's going through right now. God bless him, and we continue to pray that the Lord uh, should continue to bless him, him uh, as he continues to go through. Uh, he's actually uh, our family. Uh, his side of the family is from Salisbury, Maryland, and my mother is from Cuthbert, Georgia. And you ended up in Montgomery, Alabama. Right here at the Alabama State University is where they met. Okay. And I understand your dad is a musician himself. Absolutely, yes. Uh, he started the first band down there, uh, uh, Barber County down there, okay. uh, near Union Springs area, or Midway down that okay. way. Okay. Uh, and, and, of course, we all followed. My mother also is a musician as well. Wow. She was a, a, a math major uh, with that music as a minor. Uh, so so they, uh, they connected on the musical side. Her side of the family uh, is related to Fletcher Henderson oh. uh, out of Cuthbert, Georgia. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so we're kind of excited about the heritage. I believe now I would have to say that my brother Ron is probably the more accomplished of all of us musicians because we all play some instrument uh, or another, uh, all the way down to my youngest brother, Derek, who just retired uh, mm -hmm. from uh, the school system okay. here after 25 years. Well, you know, Ron, I talked to Ron. And Ron said that he, he never would have gotten the Kenny G thing uh, with, until you came along with that. Let's see, what do you call it? The, uh, the circular breathe? The circular? Well, they often call it the fish breathing, or the, or the circular breathing, where you can actually hold a note uh, for as long as you can breathe. And, uh, <laughs> okay. and I never, uh, that's my fondest memory of my brother Ron and I, and we played uh, back in the day when I was playing on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's one of my fondest memories. I, I kind of hold on to that because he's such an awesome musician. Oh, man. And to be able to say to that, you know what, uh, maybe we kind of learned a few things from each other back in the day, but my God, he's just off the charts when it comes to uh, his abilities and his gift to, uh, to play music. And, uh, and for, of course, you know, he plays a variety of different instruments. Of course, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to let you in on a secret. Yes. I talk to Ron and get uh, some stuff up on you before mm -hmm. uh, he decided to get with you to do this interview. <laughs> Tony. Tony, that's right. <laughs> that is uh, from Antonio, my right. middle name, right? Right. right. <laughs> See? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then he said you know, he's crazy. He's crazy about ice cream. Right. He's right about that as well. <laughs> I've got to watch it a little bit more hey. now, though. But and, and, and here's the thing: that nobody, uh, your mother, our father, are not uh, passed off. They're not preachers. But they do, and they have done what God has instilled in them, and that is to bring up uh, us as uh, siblings uh, to respect and be reverent to the Lord God Almighty. Uh, we, we came up in church. Uh, they made sure we stayed there. Uh, uh, you know, oftentimes, you know, people talking about being on drugs. Uh, yeah, they drugged us all the time. The church, <laughs> to Bible study, to Sunday school. So we stay on drugs, so to speak. So we thank God for them. Lady called me this morning. Said that you know that that family is a member of, of the we belong to the same church, the Mount Zion, A.M.E. Zion Church. Yes, sir. Uh, we grew up in uh, well, uh, well, they are still part of the Mount Zion, A.M.E. Zion Church, mm -hmm. and the uh, A.M.E. Zion environment. However, I'm uh, currently in the Baptist environment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as pastor there at Bishop Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church. But the one thing I always remind people, no matter the denomination, as long as we are centered in Christ, that's what matters most. Uh, the devil would have us fight about stuff like that. But the truth be told, if we're centered in Christ, that's the only thing that matters. Come one, come all. Doesn't that's matter right. what you got on. Yes, sir, that's exactly Make right. Make sure you come. Okay. Um, to pass this to alumni affairs director. Yes. Alumni affairs director. What does that entail? Well, th this is one of the, uh, the, the jobs that I was kind of a dream job for me after having retired from a 30-year uh, career with the United States Treasury and retiring out of Washington, D.C., having an opportunity to come back uh, to work at my alma mater, particularly uh, in alumni relations, is just a great honor for me. And, 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 and it's because, you know, it's easy to sell something you believe in. It's easy to sell the Lord God Almighty, and it's easy to sell the Alabama State University. Uh, when I think about all the things that were instilled in me while here at Alabama State University, uh, I get excited about the university and all it can do. Both my daughters attended here at ASU as well. Uh, my wife is a, ha, got a master's from here at Alabama State University. Even though she went down the road to Tuskegee to get her undergrad, she got a master's at Alabama State. So, so I'm excited about that. We're excited about it. And as alumni director, I get a chance to share that excitement with anybody I come in contact with, whether they're ASU alums or not. 
I get to tell them about the programs here. I get to tell them about uh, the different uh, degrees that they can earn. I can tell them about the experiences they can gain by being in a place that was, by the way, on the front line of the modern civil rights movement. Uh, uh, we don't talk about that enough. Uh, when we talk about HBCUs and their role in modern civil rights, uh, Alabama State University was on the front line. With Abernathy being here, uh, uh, an alumnus of here, uh, also Fred Shuttlesworth, been an alumnus of here, and of course, we've got Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who right on the campus here came and worked on his dissertation for his doctorate right here at Alabama State University. So alumni director for me is special, uh, it's special because I get to push something that I truly believe in. Man, uh, you, you have so many alumni. How do you keep up with all these people? Well, we have a database. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't be able to remember all of the names, but it, it's kind of a, an easy uh, thing to do when we're able to kind of go in and access information. But the, the good part, though, uh, is that we have alumni all over this nation mm -hmm. doing all kinds of things uh, from education uh, to entertainment uh, to business. And, and, and the thing I love about this is that I can share that we have doctors and dentists and, and, and a variety of people around this country. In other words, ASU uh, alums have stretched the globe and touched every industry possible uh, after having had a foundation here at Alabama State University. So I, I remember them wholeheartedly as opposed to by name. If I wanted to get in touch with your office, uh, Alumni Affairs, how would I do that? Actually, uh, you could just call uh, to uh, ASU and just uh, uh, hit that button front with uh, Alumni Affairs. Or you could call uh, our office here at 334-229-4280. And that's the Office of Alumni Relations. Or you could go on the website to the homepage of ASU and click on Alumni and it'll send you straight to me and send whatever message you have and, and certainly send whatever gift or donation you may have to the Alabama State University. Tom Will and Director of Alumni Affairs here at Alabama State University and also pastor of the King Memorial Baptist Church. Plus, I have a show here on WVAS, Pastors of God. So I thank you so very much. And um, the game is, we're getting ready to go back after halftime. What do you like to say to the mighty Hornets? I like to say, go Hornets, beat those Golden Tigers. I have to be partial in that area. <laughs> thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Mel Marshall interviewing Reverend Cromwell Handy. Pastor of the Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church and the Director of Alumni Relations here at Alabama State University. Before we go to break, we're going to give you some scores from around the SWAC. Right now in the first, second quarter, Alcorn State leads Mississippi College by a score of 21 to nothing. Late in the first quarter in what's turning out to be kind of a shootout between Arkansas Pine Bluff and Alabama A&M. Pine Bluff leads Alabama A&M by a score of 17 to 14. Early in the second quarter, Mississippi Valley and Lamar are locked into a scoreless tie. In the first quarter, Incarnate Word leads Texas Southern by a score of 14 to 7. Seven. South Alabama, they're taking on Jackson State right now, and they just scored a touchdown with two and a half minutes left in the first quarter and they go ahead by a score of 13-7 to over Jackson State. Uh, a couple of final games, uh, finals, in Memphis defeats Southern University by a score of 55-24. to Louisiana Tech, they nip Grambling by a score of 20-14. to And Prairie View and Houston will be kicking off in just a few minutes. We're going to take a quick break and come back with some more scores from uh, around uh, the college football scene here on the Hornet Sports Network. Find your purpose at Alabama State University. Choose from more than 60 degree programs from undergraduate courses in computer technology, education, theater arts, business, and the sciences to high demand graduate there. degrees in physical therapy, social work, microbiology, and more. Yeah. Our yeah. Ready How much time you got? Your goal. Your uh, let me. Vibrant campus life okay. And let me. One athletics. Okay. Come to our campus. I let us show you. Hey, Rob just talk. Rob talked to us long ago. He said he still can't hear you. Uh, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know either. I don't know. I have no godly idea. Let's 
Upstairs he hear a little, and downstairs he can't hear nothing. I don't know what it's all about. I don't know. Alabama State University. The time. Oh, everything plugged in. I mean, you know. Yeah, upstairs he hear a little, but downstairs he don't hear nothing. So we just have to hit him as hit can, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Never roll over I, you know, I, I, I'm keeping an eye on it. I'm keeping it checked on it. Tell us what we do. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back to the Hornet Sports Network Halftime Show. I'm Jay Holsey here in the studio here on the campus of Alabama State University where we're at halftime in the Labor Day Classic and Tuskegee leads Alabama State by a score of 21 to 20. Giving you some score updates from around the nation. Right now in overtime, 25th ranked Nebraska. They are locked into a 31 all tie against Colorado. And uh, here's a final, third-ranked Georgia. They def- they have no problem with Murray State, pounding Murray State by a score of 63-17. to 22nd-ranked Washington State, they're leading North- Northern Colorado by a score of 38-10 to 10 late in the third quarter. Oklahoma now, they are taking on South Dakota, and Oklahoma leads <coughs> South Dakota by a score of 14 to nothing already. Jalen Hurts. 9 for 11 for 160 yards and two touchdowns. 18th ranked UCF, the University of Central Florida. They're locked in with Florida Atlantic, and they lead Florida Atlantic by a score of 14 to nothing early in the first quarter. Clemson, the top ranked Clemson Tigers, having no problem with Texas A&M, defeating 12th, the 12th ranked Aggies by a score of 24 to 10. The Crimson Tide of Alabama, second-ranked Crimson Tide, trouncing New Mexico State by a score of 62-10. to 10. Tua Tagovailoa has gone 16-24 to 24 today for 227 yards and three touchdowns. Ohio State, they shut out Cincinnati by a score of 42 to nothing. One of the most interesting games of the day, the seventh-ranked Michigan Wolverines taking on Army and Michigan had to go all the way to two overtimes to take care of the Tough Army Academy by beating them by a score of 24 to 21. 13th ranked Utah, they defeat Northern Illinois by a score of 35 to 17. The 17th ranked Wisconsin Badgers getting nothing but a pounding on Central Michigan by a score of 61 to nothing. 20th ranked Iowa, they shut out Rutgers by a score of 30 to nothing. Maryland, they just run all over Syracuse. 21st ranked uh, Syracuse uh, Orange by a score of 63 to 20. And the game's just starting, uh, one of the games for the evening. LSU and Texas, uh, they're just getting started and they are tied up at zero. Tulane now, early in the first quarter, leads Auburn by a score of 3 to nothing. And early in the first quarter, Florida, they're taking on UT Martin, the 11th ranked Gators. They lead UT Martin by a score of 3 to nothing. 15th ranked Penn State, they lead Buffalo 6 to nothing late in the first quarter. Nevada and Oregon, they're just now kicking off. Michigan State, they lead Western Michigan by a score of 7 to nothing. And some games taking uh, place later on this evening on the West Coast. California will take on Washington. And uh, the 23rd ranked Stanford Cardinal will take on USC later on this evening as well. When we return, we'll come back with some more scores from around the nation and.
sent it back to Hornet Stadium, where, well, actually where the AFC Stadium, where Travis Jerome and the crew are standing by to start the second half. You're listening to the Hornet Sports Network. Find your purpose at Alabama State University. Choose from more than 60 degree programs from undergraduate courses in computer technology, education, theater arts, business, and the sciences to high demand graduate degrees in physical therapy, social work, microbiology, and more. Our world class faculty is ready to help you reach your goal. You'll also enjoy a vibrant campus life and Division I athletics. Come to our campus. Let us show you why it's always a great time to be a Hornet. For more information or to complete an application, visit us online at alasu.edu or 334-229-4291. Alabama State University. The time is now. Cleaning the fish tank. You can always come up with an excuse for not visiting longtermcare.gov. Gotta go. Yoga class starts in ten. Oh, I forgot. It's our clean night. Perfectly understandable. Since going to longtermcare.gov means you actually acknowledge that one day you will be, dare we say it, old. Mel said to tell you we're ready, Greg. Oh, we're ready, Greg. Seventy percent of older Americans will need some form of long-term care services. Go after this. If you're fifty plus, time to create your strategy for aging, so you can stay in charge. Well, you know, fifty is the new thirty. Sure. Longtermcare.gov makes it easier to figure out where you want to live, who will care for you, and the newest ways to cover the costs. Longtermcare.gov. Find your own path forward. Second half about to get underway here from ASU Stadium. Travis Jerome, J.C. Cole, and Sean Sanders, Robert Taylor, Mel Marshall in the booth with us today. Jay Holsey back at Studio Control, Alabama State. Trailing 21 to 20, and Tuskegee gets the ball to start the second half, J.C. Yes, uh, I think that um, what we got to do as at, uh, at Hornets, we got to stop making mistakes. Tuskegee is not doing anything to uh, dictate this game. What they're doing, they're making big plays. Uh, they got a few big plays over the top, and uh, then we get a penalty here and a penalty there, and then that's that's why we have this 21-20 lead. But I think after Coach Don Hill Ely got through with these guys in the half in the locker room at halftime, uh, you're going to see a difference this time. You're going to see a different different uh, form of discipline. Tuskegee will get the football back. They'll move right to the left on your dial. Alabama State will kick off from their 35 to start the second half. Ball falls off the tee and we'll redo it. Here's a kick from Hanson. It'll send Ladero Petway five yards deep into the end zone, Tuskegee. We'll take over first and 10 from their own 25 to start the second half. Up a point to that missed extra point that was blocked by Tuskegee against Hunter Hansen in the second quarter. And it'll be interesting to see which quarterback Tuskegee bring out uh, to start the second half because uh, when they brought in uh, the second quarterback, uh, he lit a spark upon, upon the team. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, he's coming back now. He's coming back for the second half, and uh, this is their best option. For me, it's a tale of two even teams, both of them with uh, around 65 plays and around 260 uh, yards of, of offense. Tuskegee comes out. That's not Torian Taylor, and that's not Kenny Gann in the backfield. That's Avante Patterson, who we saw late in the first half. He spins away from the first tackle, picks up two. It'll be second and eight for Tuskegee as the crowd Settles back in after the bands played at halftime. Told you we had special presentations. Michael Johnson was here. $100,000 to each school to their scholarship fund. 
Deontay Wilder, the heavyweight champion of the world, was here also at halftime. Recognized Miss ASU. Here's Doremus, option left. Taylor, out of bounds, scampering to the 35. Should have enough for the first down, we'll see. It will be enough for the first down for Tuskegee. First and 10, Golden Tigers from their own 35-yard line. Now, something we didn't see in the first half was the option play right. from Doremus or Ezel. Still electing to go to that left side of the offensive line for Tuskegee as well. So trying to see if we're going to make some adjustments out of halftime on that. They, they went to that a lot in the first half. Mm -hmm. Late adjustments from that defensive line for Alabama State. May have paid off a little bit, but the feet came out from under Patterson. He slips at about the 35. They'll give him back to the line of scrimmage. He may lose about six inches. So it'll be second and 10 for Tuskegee. And it looks like they're making, a, uh, we're making some adjustments on that front, uh, in front uh, right uh, defensive here. line. So what's here. happening now, you notice our nose guard is switching, is switching sides. And I think Tuskegee is just reading, uh, just like you said earlier, they're reading where he, where he lines up. Pistol formation for the Golden Tigers. Doremus drops back to pass, looks right, goes over the middle instead, pass incomplete. Not sure what this is. The play, another flag comes in late as the ball is sitting dead still at the 27-yard line, and a flag flies from about 30 yards away. They're going to call defensive holding on Alabama State, but it's a late flag is what is getting everyone in the stadium right now. The play's over with. The ball is already dead. And they're going back to the line of scrimmage and the flags fly. I wish that call was reviewable. <laughs> that was behind the play. Isaac had his receiver. His receiver didn't even run a route, so Isaac went up and put hands on him at the line of scrimmage, two yards from the line of scrimmage, away from the play, and that's the penalty they call. A lot of times you see that on those offensive cross um, face running type plays when the Offensive player is going to cross the defender's face. Sometimes when we get out of position with our feet, we'll have a tendency to grab, and that's how we got caught. Here's Doremus, pistol formation, first and 10, Tuskegee from the 45. Doremus all kinds of time, finds a receiver that's Peyton Ramsey, makes the catch over Devin Booker. The receiver was matched up with a linebacker. Ramsey with a receiver. That was an excellent uh, uh, pass for, who was that, Booker, Num number one? That's an excellent pass. He was, he was covered. I mean, he was covered. That, that, that ball was placed at the only spot that he could have caught. That's what Coach uh, down the hill was talking about before halftime. He said, hey, listen, our players are in position. We're just not making the play. So players got to make plays. Coach put you in position to make the play. So now the players got to follow through and make the play. Pistol formation again for the Golden Tigers. First and 10 from the Alabama State, 43. Doremus to Taylor. Taylor. Finds a hole up the middle, still on his feet at the 25. Josh Hill rides him down at the 20. It'll be first and 10 Golden Tigers. Now they're moving the football against Alabama State. And now we got to get into, you, you don't want to settle, but you know, you definitely don't want to give up seven points. So we want to look right here to keep them within, just, just keep them here in field goal range uh, or go for the ball for a takeover. But we don't want to give up seven here starting off the, sec the second half. An interesting chess match. You know, we got to make the adjustments as the Tuskegee offense has made the adjustments. First and 10, Tuskegee pistol formation. Here's Taylor right side. Gets under the tackle of Aaron Pope, but Pope was able to rip his helmet off, so Taylor will at least have to leave the field for a play. He picks up about four. See if they give him the 16 or the 17. They're giving him three, second and seven at the 17. It's the fourth time in this ball game, and we're just now starting the second half to tell his helmet to come off. Uh, that's going to start to drive any coach, <laughs> let alone just keep his coach crazy. He's going to have to get him a new chin strap or uh, or something. He's lucky he's getting some, some long runs. Let's just wait till next week before he gets that because at least he's <laughs> off the field for a play because right now Taylor is their offense. Right. And we have to find a way to stop him. Petway back in the backfield. Here's Doremus. He'll hand it off to his fullback. Short game. That's the first time they've gone to the fullback here today for Tuskegee. Yeah, Tuskegee That's Brandon Roberts. Tuskegee is uh, showing a little, uh, little different look this second half. Uh, and it's going to be up to Coach Pearson to make the necessary adjustments. Uh, 
to uh, stop this running game because it looks like they're, they're just uh, selling, selling out on this running game right now. 11-15 to play here in the third. Willie Slater has been known for his running game, usually a straight eye. Running the veer. Now he goes out of the pistol formation to give his guys a running start. Here's Duranus. Blitz coming. Option right. They run away from the blitz. Able to pick it up, but the bad pitch from Duranus led his running back out of bounds. Let's see where they mark him. They're going to mark him down at the 12. He'll be short by about two yards. It'll be four or fourth and two for Tuskegee. Let's see if Willie Slater rolls the dice, and he's not happy as the headsets fly, the papers fly. On the other side of the field as he drags the headset, walking back and forth. I'm always happy when the opposing team's coach is not happy. <laughs> Let me just say that. Here's a 29-yard field goal attempt from Hussick. This is the end of the field where he had his field goal blocked in overtime last year. The kick is up. Kick is good. So Alabama State able to get out of that possession. With just a field goal, 24-20 your score, 10-50 to play here in the third, and we should be in a timeout, but I think our we'll stay here. And ASU defense did exactly what they needed to do. Ben, but don't break on that series right there. We had already given up too many yards, so when it got down in that red zone, we definitely didn't want to give up seven points. So good job as far as them bending but not breaking and only giving up three points. And now it's going to be up to our offense to come out here and match Tuskegee. Uh, so Tuskegee came down out, out of the uh, halftime and drove down and got three points. We got to at least go down and get some points this time. We got to yeah. match them. And when you go down and score, do you go for two then? These are some of the questions that we're gonna have to be able to answer. And that's that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be a deciding factor. It's definitely gonna have to. Be. At some point, we're gonna have to go. For gotta have to go for two. Husky will do the kicking duties for Tuskegee. He, has, he will kick off from the left hash. And Ja'Cory Merritt and Ezra Gray will be back deep for Alabama State. 10.50 to go here in the third. 24 to 20 Tuskegee leads. Travis Jerome and Sean Sanders. J.C. Coleman in the booth. Rob Taylor down on the sideline. Mel Marshall alongside with us in the booth. Jay Holsey back in studio this, this evening. Here's Gray. Gray will take it. He's at the 20, 25. Gray with the scene to the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. One man to beat gets pushed out of bounds. And let's see where they mark him. Ezra Gray, big kickoff return for Alabama State. He has a tendency to break him. Went 99 against Auburn last year before it got called back. Heck of a return right there by an electric player, Ezra Gray. He's, he's our special teams uh, specialist right there when it comes to those return games. I hadn't seen a returner just turn it on like Gray has. He's got a certain confidence for himself that nobody else has on our team right now. Pause 10 seconds for station ID here on the Hornet Sports Network. From the campus of Alabama State University, your FM 90.7 WVASHD, Montgomery, Alabama. Bell will get the handoff from Davis, goes left, comes back up the middle. He'll pick up two. It'll be second and eight for the Hornets now from the Tuskegee 40. And Alabama State needs to punch this one in down four with ten minutes remaining here in the third. You know, Travis, you pointed out something earlier. Um, I think Bell is a little gimpy. Uh, we didn't see a lot of him the first half, so hopefully if he's good, we'll see a lot of him the second half. Awful a lot of space they're giving our slot guys. Here's Davis back to pass. Ball was caught, then punched out by the Tuskegee defender, and that was Michael Jefferson. Had the ball point. Now they're going to call it a reception. They're going to call it complete. And a fumble. That's what they're going to call a catch and a fumble. This is one we need to be doing. What is it, the NASCAR? What's the fast pass? It's, it's race car, and they're going to do it. It's a little slower than it should be. Uh, we didn't, we no, they're going to review it. We didn't get out of the uh, the pit stop fast enough on that race car. So a review coming right now, and Mashawn and JC, that's kind of one of those things. I thought it was a, a knockout, and, and y'all had a viewpoint just like I did. I thought it was a, I, I, I thought it was a knockout. I don't think it was a reception. 
Yeah, yeah, me too. Didn't the receiver didn't uh, take enough steps uh, in, in my opinion? But we'll see. The, the football guys might be on our side here, but <laughs> normally they want to see at least two to three steps with control of the right. ball to right. establish possession. Yeah, it's like bang bang. You know, as soon as he got it in and he punched it out, and you know, of course, uh, he, he uh, called it uh, a fumble. And while the referees are uh, you know waiting on the play, I just want to paint a picture to the listeners back home. That, that want to know if this game means anything. You look around at this stadium, normally the stigma of classics is after halftime, everybody leaves out. There is not an empty seat in the second half of this football game, Travis and JC, out here at all. We'll take a quick time out. We'll wait on this play. Listen, I'm going to say football on Hornet Sports Network. I'm a firefighter. A teacher. I'm a farmer. We're, we're under immediate. Take a pause. If, Ke- if he'll go out there like Something he's supposed to. Feel right. It's probably not. It's not about paranoia. Or being afraid. It's about standing up and protecting our communities. One detail at a time. Because a lot of little details can become a pattern. We. 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 We trust our instincts. Tell him Just to fly. Like tell him to fly. Tell him to fly. Because tell him to fly. know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. Come back, Jay. Your everyday. If you see something suspicious... Say something to local authorities. Three, two, one, Here's Davis across the middle to Hickson. Hickson, if they give him forward progress, he's got the first down. Let's see if they give it to him. And they will. They'll give him the 31 first down, Alabama State. Matter of fact, uh, what, what happened that time, after, after the official review, uh, they ruled that it was not uh, a catch. So, but nevertheless, we got, got the first down now. Went back to the bread and butter. The post route over the middle, first down, Alabama State. There's Davis, shotgun. He'll fake the handoff to Bell. This ball was thrown behind the intended receiver, Michael Jefferson. Incomplete. And we're talking about bread and butter, folks. If you're out in the tailgate area listening, you need to start bringing some food to the press box. Sean made his way somewhere and got him some good food. I ran into the heavyweight champ of the world, Mr. Deontay Wilder, and I just followed him. And I say follow the money, and he led me to the to the good tailgate food, the good chip. <laughs> Second and ten, Alabama State. Davis drops back to pass, goes right to Salim. Salim makes the first man miss, and then runs right into two defenders. He cuts in, he cuts out. He might be able to pick up a couple extra yards. And his momentum is what brought him on that. He ran a six-yard hitch route, but he did an excellent job, Travis, if you listen at home, of coming back to the football. What does that mean? That means when you stop and you turn around and face the quarterback, you start walking back towards that quarterback to cut down the throw. Did that, made distance on the defender behind him. That's how he was able to slip the first guy, make a miss, and get a nice game for the Hornets. Davis, third and five. Sends Larry Brown in motion. Davis drops back to pass. Here's the blitz. Davis gets it off. The ball was thrown quickly. It was thrown before Jefferson was anticipating it. Brings up fourth down. Let's see what head coach Donald Ely does if he rolls the dice. He's going to attempt the field goal as Hunter Hansen comes out. And that's, that's a little bit of that philosophy I used to talk about last year, Travis, which was don't lose three trying to get seven. And so right here, he's not wanting to leave any points on the field, keep it a tight game, keep the pressure back on Tuskegee by going for the field goal. Hunter Hansen, 43-yard field goal attempt. Hansen's kick is up. Hansen's kick is good right down the middle for Hunter Hansen. 24-23, Alabama State now pulls within a point. And that's, and that's good for our offense. You know, we, like I said, we needed to match them. We needed to match them. 24, Alabama State 23. And that's exactly what we did. Hunter Hanson, that kick is well within his range. What an offensive weapon he has been. 
uh, from the kicking standpoint, kicking game standpoint, ever since last year coming onto the scene. And, and, and you remember that that game last year with uh, with Alcorn with all the field goals. He came through for us and, and really uh, set us set us apart from the other teams in the, the Swaggies. 24-23, Tuskegee leads Alabama State. 7.54 remaining here in third. Trying to take time off the clock, it sounds like. They got 8.04. Sounded like, if I heard him correct, he said take it down to 8.01. That's exactly what they did. Took it down. That's it. Here's Hanson. Tuskegee will return the kick left. They've got an alley. He might score. He will score. 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Golden Tigers. Big kickoff return that time for Tuskegee as they went left. Found an alley. And that's Davron Valson that makes that. You know, I can't have that. I was looking for a big play on special teams, but not from Tuskegee. Yeah. You just can't have that on special teams. Coming down after... You just, you just negated everything that you were trying to do from a strategic standpoint from Coach Ely as far as trying to keep it tight, kicking the field goal, keeping it within one point. You can't let them answer and come right back down the field on a big kickoff return like that. That's right. That's exactly what it is. This kick is up. This kick is good. And Tuskegee has pushed the lead to eight with 7.47 to play. Timeout on the field. Back after this time out, you're listening to Alabama State Football on the Hornet Sports Network. Find your purpose at Alabama State University. Choose from more than 60 degree programs from undergraduate courses in computer technology, education, theater arts, business, and the sciences to high demand graduate degrees in physical therapy, social work, microbiology, and more. Our world-class faculty is ready to help you reach your goal. You'll also enjoy a vibrant campus life and Division I athletics. Come to our campus. Let us show you why it's always a great time to be a Hornet. For more information or to complete an application, visit us online at alasu.edu or 334-229-4291. Alabama State University. The time is now. This is Gene Knight reminding you to tune in to Cafe Jazz from 5 until 8 p.m. on Sunday where you can hear the best in big band, bebop, and beyond. Some great jazz by great jazz musicians. So if you're a real jazz lover, remember Cafe Jazz. Real jazz for folks who feel jazz. That's Cafe Jazz. Sunday from 5 until 8 p.m. on your member supported public radio station WVASFM in HD. 3, 2, 1, you're back. 7.47 to play here in the third quarter. Tuskegee. Uh, big kickoff return, 99 yards by DeVarn Valson. Pushes the lead to 31 to 23. That's the second time this season Alabama State in two games has given, off, given up a kickoff return. Four touchdown. They'll get the ball back as the other side of the stadium, which is the visitor side, has woken up after that kickoff return. They are rocking. Can you hear? I mean, that the, the 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 momentum in the air of our side of the stadium left, and their side just got inflated over there. I mean, you can barely hear yourself on that side. There's no time to panic. You're right. Definitely, there's no time to panic right here. Game is well within reach. Here's a kick. It'll go through the end zone. 
Alabama State will take it first and 10 from our own 25 to start this drive. And so Alabama State again. Let's go down the field. Let's answer like we've been doing each time Tuskegee has scored. Uh, obviously, there's going to have to be a defensive stop here, but neither defense, to be honest with you, has shown that they've can, been able to do it on a consistent basis. We've done it sporadically on both sides of the ball, but on a consistent basis, no. So I don't have anything that's in, in any inclination that would lead me to believe that we can't go straight down the field again, Travis and J.C., to continue the momentum and keep scoring, match well, if this game keeps, keeps going the way it's going, it's going to come down to the last position. The last person, last team with the ball will win the game. We're going to get a delayed game here, it looks like, unless they reset this clock. Oh, Coach Donald Hill Ely uh, was able to get a timeout on. I saw you putting your hand over your head like, oh, my goodness, we're going to miss it over there, Travis. But calm down. Coach is in the ball game. He's locked in. He's engaged. He saw it. Six seconds left on the play clock when the offense broke the huddle. They got out. They still didn't see the play clock, and that's the timeout had to be called from the sideline by the Hornets. They'll have it first and 10 from their own 25. A lot of football left, over 22 minutes. But if you're Alabama State, you got to put some points on the board and then make some plays on special teams and then stop the running game right now of Tuskegee because that's where they're hurting you. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They're, they're gassing this on the running game. Well. Here's Bell. A little delay, and again, another shoestring tackle. He was almost able to break one. There's one of our matchup players right there, Ricky Norris for Tuskegee, coming in and making the shoestring tackle. Otherwise, Bell, who was our wild card, uh, would have got up out of there and still been running. I think if Bell was, if Bell was truly 100%, uh, that, that wouldn't, wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Yeah, you got to tap those feet. You know, players use those speed ladders now, you know, to get those feet going and get, get your agility going. You got to tap those feet in there and get up out of that tackle, no doubt. Here's Davis, back to pass. Goes over the middle to Jeremiah Hicks, and Hicks and hangs on and avoids the hit. He's going to get to midfield. It'll be first down, Alabama State. Here's a number for you guys. Last week, Alabama State put over 100 yards. There's a penalty on the play. Not sure if Davis got hit late. But he's down on the ground. He gets up. Last week, well over 100 yards rushing today, 23 yards on 20 carries. Mm. So Tuskegee has made Alabama State one-dimensional here tonight. Offside. Uh, offside. You know, with our, court, with our quarterback actually uh, getting a little dinged up there, I think our second-string quarterback is Jet E. Jet, Jet uh, is, is, the, is the man to come in. And he's a gray shirt, which is uh, a new term for me. <laughs> uh, actually, he's a graduate. Gra oh, graduate. Okay, okay that's what GR is. Okay, all right, I got you. <laughs> I was going to say that was a new new classification for me. <laughs> Davis. Appreciate you clearing that up. Shotgun formation. Drops back to pass. Looks down the sideline. Goes to Salim. Looks like there was a late hand in there from Tuskegee to push Salim out of the way. Kadaris Davis right now 15 for 22. One interception, 225 yards. He's got a career-high three touchdowns now. And you talking about matching speed for speed right there on the outside of the wide receiver position because Salim can absolutely fly from his wide receiver position. But number seven for Tuskegee was, like you said, step for step, Ken Height showing his speed out there. I love that matchup down there at the uh, Alabama State side of the field. Ken Hike and Ricky Norris, and we'll tell you, I'll tell you more about them two, those two guys after this play for Tuskegee for those of you at home. Here's Bell on the delay. Again, up the middle, flag down. Bell will take off. Bell will score. We'll see if it stands. Offsides on the defense. How do you do? Noah Bell, 50 yard gallop for the Hunts. It'll stand 31 to 29. And there's that speed we were talking about, fellas. Time to read that bell. 71's got to be careful there as he's running down the field for Alabama State. He says something to number 13, Khalid James for Tuskegee. You don't want to get an unsportsmanlike penalty. We need every point now, especially with missing the kick early in the ball game. We need every point here, so don't want to get an unsportsmanlike conduct. Khalid James has went to every offensive lineman and said something, and now he's talking to Jordan Williams as the extra point will be attempted. They're going to go for two. So we asked that question. When were we going to have to go for two? Now is the time. This now is the same answer. point in the game he did it last time, and this is something we can talk to Coach Ely about on Monday night, is when do you determine when to go for two? 
Late defender coming home for Tuskegee. Davis tries to snap it before they get ready. And another defender from Tuskegee coming on the field. Here's the snap. Flag coming. Should be legal participation or on sides. We'll see. See what the call. It'll be on Tuskegee. I just saw the motion from that line judge on the other side of the field. And maybe that'll give Davis some time to settle down. He just didn't seem comfortable right there on that sequence of events during that play. Everybody was rushed. We'll see what it is. It's going to be off so It's going to be half the distance. So now it's going to be the extra point trial be from the one and a half. So do you stay in the spread right here on the one yard line or do you bring it down in the jumbo package and, and try to uh, pound your weight since you have the larger offensive line? They're going to stay in the spread, but here's the deal. For those of you at home, Jimmy Farrell just came in at tight end. Little nugget, Jimmy Farrell might be the best blocking tight end we have on the team, so that might give something away if you're Alabama State here. They've got Hickson and Salim out wide left. They got Michael Jefferson one-on-one -on -one coverage out here to the right. Ron Bell in the backfield. Jimmy Farrell set up in an H-back. Here's Bell. Bell, touchdown. Excuse me, two-point conversion is good. And we're tied at 31. 6-24 remaining here in the third, 31-31. Wow. That's all I can say. Who would have thought? Labor Day Classic will be a shootout. Both offenses electric. Bell is our wild card, the big play guy, and uh, took it to the house, did all of it. 31-31, your score. We'll step aside as there's a timeout on the field. You're listening to Alabama State Football on the Hornet Sports Network. Blood clots are life-saving when they stop <laughs> but they can form when they aren't needed and cause a heart attack, stroke, lung damage, and death. Venus thromboembolism, or VTE, is when a clot forms in a now in the uh, through my phone, and it's not in delay. So you good, Rob? Hear me, Mel. I got my phone on. You hear me? I got your off and you're up. So they can try to come down to me if they want to. Rob. All right. We will. No, he, he's listening to it on the phone. or warmth and redness. If you have sudden shortness of breath, chest pain, or cough up blood, call 911 immediately. The good news is that VTE can be prevented and treated. Learn more at agingresearch.org slash VTE. Brought to you by the Alliance for Aging Research. Tune in to FM 90.7 WVAS for Promises of God with Reverend Cromwell Handy. Pastor of Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church. Every Sunday at 8.45 a.m. with Angier Johnson, the Gospel Messenger, on FM 90.7. WBAS, the sound of excellence. Three, two, one, you're back. Alabama State's about to kick off. We'll go down to Rob Taylor on the sideline. Rob, what you got for us? Hey, guys, they just put the uh, big chain, gold chain, around the neck of Bell as he went in for those two points there. Hey, it is exciting down here on the sideline. It might be a little warm, a little, a little hot, but, hey, the guys are pumped up. They are fired up. And we got so many former players on the sideline. They are excited as well. It's just been total excitement down here on the sideline. Even when the Hornets got behind, the excitement never left the guys. They are ready for this game. Appreciate that, Rob. 6.24 to play here in the third. A lot of football. 31-31. Here's a kick from Hanson. This one will go into the end zone. And he won't return this one. It was only a yard difference. He decided to nail it. I think he figured out that maybe Alabama State made an adjustment on that kickoff team. He saw four black shirts coming down at him and no white shirts in front of him. <laughs> it made a business decision is what we call that. <laughs> You know, and, and it's a good thing that our offense went downfield the way they did because now we, we answered the bell. Now we answered Chesky. Now we got to get a stop. We got to get a stop. You can't steal my prize, JC. Answer the bell. <laughs> answer the bell. <laughs> You're right, though. Which team is going to make that stop? We've been waiting on it all game. Who's going to make the stop? Here's Ezel, or Doramus, excuse me. Doramus going to go deep. 
He's got a receiver, a lot of hand fighting, no flag. They're letting them play again. They took it off the board there in the second quarter for a little while and started calling it. Now they're letting them play. Kenan Eisen with that step for step, doing that old tap technique on that thigh of the receiver, as we learned from the defensive back, to, to slow that receiver, just tap them, letting them know that you're there, getting them off of his stride, taking away that rhythm. That time to work for him on that deep pass, incomplete. Isaac, a sophomore from midfield Alabama, and they try and cope up for another sophomore. On the other side of the field for Miami, two really good corners for Alabama State. Tuskegee will line up in the eye. Receiver goes in motion. Karamis will turn and hand it to Taylor. Taylor gets stacked up at the line of scrimmage. And that's Urshad Davis, that freshman safety, who was named the SWAC, or not SWAC, Stats FCS, honorable mention freshman, national freshman of the week, last week for his performance. It's a mouthful for one award. <laughs> Opa-loka, Florida? Opa-loka. Opa-loka, Florida. Right outside Miami from Carroll City High School. Okay, I know about Carroll City. Brother, brother of Carlton Davis, played at Auburn, okay. played for Tampa Bay. All right. Got the, got the gene. Davis is a walk-on. Just walked up and said, Coach, I'm going to play, and came in highly recommended. Here's, here's Doramus. Ogletree flushes him from the pocket. Doramus across the middle of the field, and how about that? Did you see, Michon, how short arm Valson got? That's the guy that returned the kickoff. He remembers how Culpepper hit Ezel, and he stopped dead in his tracks and turned his back. He, he put his, picked his briefcase up and made a business decision again. He carried a briefcase in business and said, no, sir, no, thank you. I'll live to see another day because you're right. <laughs> Culpepper was coming down and had him dead to rights if he would have caught that ball. So Tuskegee will be forced to punt. Kind of a rare thing here in this game uh, so far. These punts are excellent job, Alabama State defense. Let's see if we can go down and score. Third total punt of the day combined for either team. This ball will bounce. Kobe Crab picks it up at the 30. He's going to have to try to make something out of nothing. Gets back to where he originally caught it. He almost lost about five or six yards as Delancey Tolliver blocks his oh, man no. behind the play to the ground and gets a pancake award on the day for Alabama State. Well, you know, we, our defense did what they were supposed to. They, they made the stop. Now, if we can come back and put some points on the board right now, I think we'll, we'll be home free. Yeah, you're right, home free. And, again, we've got confidence. We need 12 to continue to talk to his offense. Hey, we got this. We're right where we want to be. We re, uh, kindle that confidence in the team. Let's go down the field. Hey, three points is not bad here. Let's just not have any turnovers. 5 0 to play in the third. Davis to Hicks and Hicks and cuts outside, gets a block, gets to the 40, run out of bounds at about the 43. We'll see where they spot him. It'll be a first down, Alabama State at the 42. Is it me or does Hicks and just look a step faster this year? And he's got eight catches for over 100 yards today. And that was a good block by, by Jefferson that time. And, and we'll, talk, we'll talk more about Hicks and after this play as Davis will go back and shotgun again. Takes it to Bell. Outside of the tight end, Larry Brown. Brown goes over one and through another and is down at the Tuskegee 49. There's your guy, J.C. <laughs> Brown delivers again for Alabama State. Yes, sir. The Brown does deliver. Yes, man. <laughs> hey, you might have got a nickname yes, for him. There you go. Brown delivers. Yes, sir. <laughs> Shotgun formation for Alabama State. Davis will hand the bell. Bell, man. A hesitation step from Bell that time. Looked like the Matrix as he just came to a dead stop. Got the first down. There's a marker down, and that's in the vicinity of holding. But Mashon and J.C., Jeremiah Hickson, J.C., you remember we talked about this at the beginning of, uh, last week after the game. you got to have a short memory. you got to put things behind you. Hickson was the guy that Davis threw that ball so hard to on Thursday night. and went through his hands, hit off his helmet, and was intercepted in the game. How does he respond? Only eight receptions, 116 yards through not even three quarters yet. That's right. That's rumble, right. young man, rumble. <laughs> Davis now at 236 yards passing. That's the penalty second and 11. Here's Alabama State. Gray goes in motion to the left. Davis will come back right to Sling. Sling gets a block, 45. Down at about the 44, he gets knocked back a yard. 
And from my angle, yeah, I'm looking to the left. I see a bird fly across. I thought it was another penalty fly. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just me. <laughs> but, yeah, we ran a lot of smoke and mirrors. We flexed uh, uh, flared out the back. Ezra Gray on that play in the motion, trying to take them to the opposite way we wanted to come back, which was to the screen to the bottom of the field. A lot of much to do about kind of nothing because we only got about two or three on that. But. Here's Davis. Got drop back to pass. Heavy pressure steps up, eludes the pressure, dives head first instead of sliding him because he dove head first. He got about another yard, and maybe a yard and a half to his own 49 to bring up third and three. And that's the only thing that kind of hurts him with the sticks only being on one side of the field because he kind of didn't know where he was. That's actually the play, Travis, that you want him to slide on. You're not going to win that battle. You're going head first. You still got four more yards there. Go ahead and slide, live to see another day. Luckily, the Tuskegee defenders spared him on that. It's actually going to be fourth down. I misread the down marker, so fourth down, Alabama State. And we'll stay with you after this punt and just take the quarter time out. Here's Craven. He'll pooch this one. He'll get to the 22. So Tuskegee takes over first and 10 from the 22, and this game's starting to build up a little bit. Like we went through last year, we thought one team was going to pull away. Nobody could. And before you know it, we're sitting here in overtime, and Alabama State goes sack, sack, tackle for a loss, block field goal, as we're gray around left end for a touchdown. Both defenses right there responded. And we've been talking about them. Maybe mm -hmm. they heard us, and so they stepped up their game. So now it comes down to which defense is going to make the final stop because – uh, you know, we're running, like you said, time is starting to wind down with two minutes left in this third quarter here. So now is when every play starts to really matter. Our boy Wiley, our engineer for the game, listening back at home, decides that the Birdman of ASU, after that bird flew across the field, <laughs> Tuskegee takes over first and 10 from the own 22 yard line. Here's Doramus. He's going to go left. You know, they try and call Pepper. Receiver never looked up for the ball, so Culpepper just had to play on the receiver the whole time. Yeah, everybody was confused on that play. The quarterback, Rob, right receiver, and the DB. <laughs> so uh, we'll take that, setting up second and long. Second and 10, Tuskegee. Wait the Golden Tigers to break the huddle. They're breaking a little slow, 15 on the play clock. They'll get lined up. And now they reset the play clock to 25. Here's the Ramos. Taylor fumbles that ball. It'll go out of bounds. That's the freshman Davis again. He'll stay with Tuskegee. So halftime adjustment was made on that option. Uh, you saw Davis come down. He knew who we had right there on the pitch, man. Came up and made a, cru a crucial uh, blow right there to punch that fumble out of the hands of the back. Unfortunately, it rolled out of bounds for Alabama State, but we're still right where we want to be. Tuskegee is backed up deep in their territory, Travis, and it's like third and 15. Money down right here, defense. Let's get loud if you're in the crowd. If you're at home, let's get loud. We need this series right here. Shotgun formation, two backs in the backfield with Doramus. Doramus steps up, avoids the pressure, rolls left, still has nobody open. Now finally throws it, and Adele Petway somehow makes the catch with Devin Booker all over him. It'll be fourth down, though, as he only gets to the 29, and they'll be about three yards short as we go to a minute remaining here in the third. Every time Doramus gets out of that pocket, he just scares the living daylights out of me. He is just so dangerous and elected from his quarterback position at Tuskegee. I got to give credit to him. He just knows how to extend the football play. I thought right there he was going to take off and run, and he just stayed back there and kind of bubbled around a little bit and waited on somebody to come free. But good job by Alabama State keeping everybody in front of him so even when they did catch the ball, they could make the tackle in front of the sticks. Here's the punt from Tuskegee. He'll chase Crab back to his 26. Nowhere to go. He's waiting on a block. Doesn't get it, and he'll go down at the 27. They'll give him a yard. 
with 24 seconds to play here in the third. We'll stay here for the final 24 before we head to the fourth quarter and a break. Rob Taylor, still yes, live down there on the sideline. Good to have you back with us here in the second half. It's good to be back. You know, they were the guys on the sideline, the teammates of Cody were hoping that Cody would uh, be able to take that one downfield. Uh, he really didn't have any blockers, as you guys said, didn't have anywhere to go. But uh, they were rooting for him the whole time. Hornets got to move this football, put some more points on the board. Davis looks to the sideline. He'll go under center this time. This might be the first play we've been under center in the first two games. Single back in the backfield is Gray. Gray gets hit at the line and goes down. That'll do it for the third unless somebody calls a timeout, which Tuskegee has three, Alabama State has two. And that'll do it for the third. Fourth quarter, here we come. 31-31, Alabama State Tuskegee, 2019 Labor Day Classic. Back after this timeout, you're listening to Alabama State Football on the Hornet Sports Network. favor and hold the ladder for me? Uh, I have a better idea. Let's just call somebody to clean the gutters. <laughs> Scoop out a few leaves? Come on. I'll be down in a heartbeat. <laughs> oh, no. Using a ladder might seem easy. Misusing one is even easier. For tips on ladder safety, visit orthoinfo.org, a public service message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, who want to keep your bones safe, strong, and well-connected. Hello, music lovers. This is Scott Michaels. Each week, we dig into the world's greatest record library for two hours of the best of the big band era on In the Mood. And this week, we bring you a special presentation of Glenn Miller's one and only appearance at Carnegie Hall in 1939. Join us for two of the swingingest hours on the air. In the Mood, Sunday afternoons at 3 on 90.7 FM WVAS, the sound of excellence. Three, two, one, you're back. Welcome back to ASU Stadium 2019 Labor Day Classic. Alabama State 31, Tuskegee 31. Travis Jerome, Sean Sanders, J.C. Coleman in the booth. Rob Taylor on the sideline. Mel Marshall alongside with us. Jay Holsey back in studio control. Well, fellas. I, well, I think this fourth quarter, we've got to figure out a way to loosen up this Tuskegee uh, uh, line and we got to run the ball more. Uh, I think that um, uh, we started out, you know, driving the ball downfield, but then of course they got stout in the middle, and we were not able to, to penetrate that uh, off the defensive line. So I uh, think what we got to do this fourth quarter is we got to figure out a way to penetrate the defensive line and then actually get some running games, loosen them up, and hit them over the top. And for me, whichever team makes the first mistake is more than likely going to lose with coming down to the fourth quarter right here. You've got to really lock in on uh, on everything and focus right here because it's not a lot of room for error. I really thought you were about to say the first team that was going to score that had the most points was going to win. We've done that before, remember? <laughs> no, no, no. I can pull that one. KD will be back in pistol formation. Gray behind him. He'll turn. He'll hand it off to Gray. Gray goes right side, has a little bit of a hole, able to get some yards, and again, after the tackle is made, the back judge throws another flag, and he's going to call holding. Does he have any eligibility left? Because he's been throwing those flags 50 yards. <laughs> I mean, it's just its a matter of just as an interior lineman, when your guy gets by, let go. And that's what's happening. They're not letting go. And they're engaging their block as Gray goes by, and that's when they're getting called. You can see it from here, but it's just the timing of the flag when it comes out, I think, is what's throwing everybody off. Right. And his location. He's supposed to be covering the wide receivers. What is he? <laughs> he's, he's looking at the lineman. I'm like, oh, man. I'm thinking it was something with the wide receiver holding or something like that. He's way out of the 
the, the view of the interior lineman and still throwing that flag from back there. Second and 19 for Alabama State. 14-15 running here in the fourth. So if you're not if you're not able to watch the game, and you're listening in just so we can paint the picture. The ball is on the Alabama State 18. The referee we're talking about is back at the 50. Here's Davis drops back to pass. Looks right, shuffles right. He'll heave it. This is trouble. Makes it out of bounds somehow. I thought that ball was going to stay in the field of play. And that's one of those, Davis, you just got to try to, he had to get it to the line of scrimmage, completely understand. But he almost threw that thing side on him. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad he threw it five yards out of bounds. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was scary. Tuskegee now starting to cramp. First game of the year for them. And they play on a natural grass field. They practice on natural grass. So this turf adds about, I don't know, 15, 20 degrees every time you get on it. And he's writhing in pain. That left calf or that la that left hamstring has, has really tightened up on him. Yeah, and that uh, is, a, is a crucial time for them because we're out in the passing down with 30-19, and seven is arguably their best boundary corner on Tuskegee defense. So... We'll see if um, Alabama State is aware of the player that they got down and they're going to try to create some type of mismatch uh, with a, uh, a second um, second guy on the depth chart to come in and try to replace him on this play right here. Ken Hyde goes to the sidelines for Tuskegee and immediately goes right to back to the ground behind the team. Now, on the, on, the, on the depth chart, they got the Shea Hubbard is supposed to back up Ken Hyde. But, you know, we've been fooled before when it comes to the Tuskegee <laughs> roster. <laughs> Travis, so I'm just going to wait and see because I see number one coming out there, and I definitely don't have him on the roster Tuskegee. <laughs> A lot of number changes for the Golden Tigers when they got here today, which is well expected. Third and 19 for Alabama State. Let's see what offensive coordinator Joe Blackwell and head coach Donald Hill Ely have up their sleeve. It'll be a draw play to Ezra Gray just to get some more yardage for Anthony Craven or if they'll actually put the ball in the air. They're going to drop back and pass. Here's Davis. He's going to go long. Airs it out. Michael Jefferson wide open. 35-30. Jefferson gets away. Jefferson 20-10. How do you do? Michael Jefferson 82 yards. Kadaris Davis to Michael Jefferson. Touchdown, Alabama State, and there are no flags on the field. I repeat, there are no flags on the field. Wow. Longest pass play for Kadarius Davis, longest career reception for Michael Jefferson. That was one of those plays. That was one of those plays that he was determined not to get, he was determined to make that touchdown. That's what you get when you got 6'4 at receiver. A guy that's like a basketball player used to going up. He high-pointed that ball as we went on the kick. Extra point is good, and just like that, Alabama State up 38-31. Michelle, before you go, how about this? Michael Jefferson, four catches, 157, three touchdowns on their career high. Jeremiah Hickson, eight catches, 116 yards, one touchdown, a career high. Kadaris Davis, a career high, 333 or 330 yards passing for a touchdown. And a lot of times, just to, 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 just to go off of that, it's the second year. It's the second year in the system for all those guys, and the light bulb goes off. How about this score from across the way? UAPB leads Alabama A&M 31-14 up in Huntsville. Wow. I got to check that score and make sure that's not reversed. <laughs> Not a knock against UAB, UAPB, folks, but I'm just saying after Alabama A&M came out the way they did and won that game against Morehouse at the end of the game on Sunday, kind of makes you wonder. It's true. Is there a letdown right now up in Huntsville, Alabama? Here's 38-31. This game's not over by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, partner, but we got Tuskegee now playing catch-up, and that's the best way to be is they got to match our scores, and we get the ball back to go up and score again as opposed to vice versa. But just back on Michael Jefferson real quick. You know, I'm a former wide receiver, so I, I just love stuff like that when receivers do what they're taught to do, and that is to use his length because he's 6'4", and also high point the football. He went up with his hands, caught the highest point of the ball. That allowed him to see with his eyes where the DB was, 
maneuver the ball around and go break a tackle and go score. Alabama State Hanson's kick will land at the 10. Up ended by his own man. Fumble, ball on the ground. They're going to say that the ground calls the fumble as the line judge comes in. From the Tuskegee side, I would say he had the Tuskegee coaches in his ear, but he was already outside the team box, so no no go on that. But that game in Hustle going to the fourth quarter, 31 to 14, UAPB. Wow. And UAB, uh, I mean, excuse me, Alabama AM, uh, for those that don't know, was ranked in the top 10 uh, coming into this season for uh, the, the uh, Black College National Top 25 list. So that will be a huge upset and a great, if we're able to pull this off, Great uh, momentum thing for Alabama State to move forward as they get ready for swag play. Tuskegee gets the snap, and they're going to whistle it dead. I haven't seen an official come in yet. Now I do. Tuskegee got out on the field with six seconds on the play clock. Alabama State was still coming out on the field. Tuskegee ran the play, and Alabama State got out late, but then the official stopped it, and that's just fair play rule. Because the thing that you've got to have the fair play rule in effect because you can't have a team run out because you got injuries that could happen. Remember, they've taken football somewhat out of football with the safety issues, and that's one of them, which in this case I'm kind of glad they did it. Yeah, because that, that's a new rule. <laughs> we, we definitely didn't have that rule when I was playing. I was like, oh, my goodness, uh, you know, what, what a uh, strat strategic play right there, running them on late and trying to run the ball. But you're right, the rule has changed, and now you got to wait on the other team to, uh, before you can snap the ball. Here's Kenny Gant. We haven't called his name since the first quarter. He spins and another Tuskegee helmet on the field. As Gant is brought down at about the 23, maybe the 24. We'll see where they mark him. As there's still a lot of talking going on. Now it's the offensive line for Tuskegee. Number 55 there, Cameron Smith for Tuskegee. Cameron Smith had his helmet knocked off. But Rochelon Romain is the guy that's doing all the talking right now on that offensive line for the Golden Tigers. Still kind of feel a little uneasy in the game. <laughs> Come on, partner. You know what you told me earlier? Yeah. Here's DeRamus. He gets it to Ramsey. Ramsey against Davis. And Urshad Davis makes the one-on-one -on -one tackle, but not before Ramsey picks up a first down. For Tuskegee, and that's a good play by Urshaw Davis. I was just going to say, yeah, he was on the island. That guy was on the island and made the play, and, folks, he is a freshman doing that. That is very tough to do from a freshman standpoint, to be able to tackle. These are juniors and seniors that he's going against. He was in high school last year. This kid, I got to give him more, more and more praise from what he's doing from a freshman standpoint to make that one-on-one -on -one tackle, and he's been doing it all game, Travis. I hope Big Brother's not listening tonight, but – Folks said that he has a chance and could be better than Big Brother was at this age. Gant around the left side, stopped for a minimal gain. Matter of fact, he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Big Brother was a draft pick in the NFL draft, right? Attendance tonight announced 27,828. Wow. I would say sell out. Sell out and more. <laughs> There will be no more jokes about the top side of the ASU side of the stadium. <laughs> For those of you at home wondering, did we fill out the top? Yes. <laughs> Very impressive. Pistol formation to Ramos. Quickly looks left, has to adjust, goes over the middle. Ball oh, could have been picked off. Oh, I thought we had that mistake that we talked about that we needed for the fourth quarter right there. Oh, number 24 for ASU at the safety standpoint, Joshua, Joshua Hill. Hill. Senior, tip ball drill. We practiced that so much, and it was right there for him. He's going to he's gonna dream about that tonight. Go ahead, JC. I see something going on over there. Well, if we can get, if we can get a stop right here, if we can get a stop right here and we can control, we, we pretty much have this game in control because they have not had an answer the second half for us on our what down is it, JC? Third down and the money down. Money, money down. down. <laughs> there you go. There you go, part. He's learning. <laughs> Quick learner. Here's Duramus. He goes left again to Ramsey. Ramsey, that third down receiver. And I'm surprised that the defensive back, Donnell Thomas for ASU, didn't recognize what was going on. The receiver pushed up hard upfield, but it's third and 12. Exactly. So 
He's just trying to push you to get you uh, to, to, to get out of there so we can come back. That was a comeback route all the way from the uh, Tuskegee wide receiver right there. And instead of just kind of slow playing it a little bit, uh, Donnell Thomas kind of got out of there too fast and allowed the comeback to happen for Tuskegee, setting them up for a first down. Play the sticks. Play the sticks. and a half to play here in the fourth. 38-31 Alabama State to Ramos. I don't know who's got the football. He tried to stick it in his running back's belly. I think his running back finally took it as they got to the line of scrimmage. That was one of those Doremus rode him until the line of scrimmage. It was just hard to tell who got the football. And it was the running back from Tuskegee. So now ASU puts uh, the starter back out there, Keenan Isaac, to replace uh, Donnell Hill, excuse me, for Alabama State, Donnell Thomas, uh, you know, recognizing that, hey, he was kind of out of position and just was not, was out of his element on that previous play. Doremus, 162 yards passing. Taylor, 90 yards rushing for Tuskegee. Ramsey, 102 receiving. Davis, 330 passing. Bell, 63 rushing. Jefferson, 157. Hickson, 116 receiving. Here's Doremus. He's going to look long. He's got Ramsey overshoots him as he was matched up with a safety on that play. That is a lonely place to be from a safety standpoint, to be matched up on the fastest wide receiver from the other team. Thank goodness that uh, that ball was overthrown, and that could have been bad for us as uh, the receivers tapping out there, uh, number one for Tuskegee. So you're starting to see that uh, what you were talking about earlier, Travis, which is that fatigue starting to settle in for this Tuskegee roster because obviously they're not as deep as, as ASU is. 10.35 to play. And that was the one thing Willie Slater talked about in the press conference on Wednesday. He was worried about the depth issue, and he's always said that's been the biggest key in this game. Here's Doremus. Looks right. Did Culpepper come up with it? No, in and out of his hands as he dove. He read it beautifully. Made a play on the football and just had it go through his hands. It'll be fourth down for Tuskegee, however. So for the folks listening at home, Culpepper comes back and does play the comeback route exactly how we talked about it up here, how it's supposed to be played. Third he down. slow. He knew what down it was. He knew what the sticks was. So he came out of it. Came out of it slowly. Kept everything in front of him. Watched the drop of the quarterback. Came back. Broke that. He almost ran the route for the receiver, as we say, and almost had an interception for ASU. But that's how you run that play from a defensive back standpoint. And again, Tuskegee has guys running on off the field. It'll be Kylie James who's running around. They get a delay of game. If it wasn't a delay of game, it would have been a false start because James is just running around out there in the backfield trying to be the blocker for his punter. Well, I think that, I think that fatigue factor has set in for Tuskegee now. You know, mental fatigue and physical fatigue. So now we need to take advantage of this and just pound it out and let's go home with a victory. Right. Seal it right here. Does not put the ball on the ground. I've been impressed with the punt returner all night. He's very patient back there. Catches the ball well to be a freshman. Crab back deep again. He'll make the catch at about the 19. He goes left. The return is set up. Flag comes out. Saw it from here. See, there's another one. There's another one. Thought it was DJ Khaled in the booth here for a minute with all these another, another one. one. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> well, I hope the, these are offsetting. The, well, the first one was obvious. We saw that block in the back. Ramsey got turned around backwards. So we saw that one. Mm, but I am excited in what I see in this young freshman in Kobe Crab. We'll wait here until they call this penalty. I'll, actually, let's go ahead and take a timeout while they call the penalty. We'll reset it when we come home. You're listening to Alabama State Football on the Hornet Sports Network. Find your purpose at Alabama State University. Choose from more than 60 degree programs from undergraduate courses in computer technology, education, theater arts, business, and the sciences to high demand graduate degrees in physical therapy, social work, microbiology, and more. Our world class faculty is ready to help you reach your goal. You'll also enjoy a vibrant campus life and Division I Athletics. Come to our campus. Let us show you why it's always a great time to be a Hornet. For more information, 
or to complete an application, visit us online at alasu.edu or 334-229-4291. Alabama State University. The time is now. Offsetting penalties called on both teams, so Tuskegee will have to repunt. And that sets up favorably for the return team if Tuskegee elects to kick the ball in between the, the, the lines, so to speak, and not kick it out of bounds because you've essentially got to bring back. A lot of these guys were playing on defense the whole time, well, well excuse me, playing on offense, and now they got to come back and run down the field an extra time. That's a long way to wait, a long way to run, folks, if you listen at home. Uh, you know, and it's hot. So add all that together, and you've got a favorable play if uh, Kraft can catch this on the run and get upfield. 10-15 mm -hmm. to play. 38-31. Kraft right now needs to gain possession and give it to his offense for a chance to grow this lead. They came after it. Couldn't get to it. Kraft will let it bounce. Davis gets away from it. So they'll end up with about the same field position as they would have if the return would have stayed. Flag. And there's a flag somewhere. It's way back here at the Tuskegee 43. We'll wait and see what this flag is and see if Alabama State makes them re-kick again. I would. So Donahill Ely is going to tell him to push it back. He didn't even wait on the official. He just went ahead and pointed. Shirt untucked. I got everybody's shirts are untucked. I can imagine. There's probably about 120 down there on that field right now. You know, that's what happens when you get hot and tired and, and you start grabbing and grabbing, and that's what they're doing. They're grabbing. Well, let's find out how hot that turf really is, Rob Taylor. You would say 120, wouldn't you, uh, Travis? <laughs> well, it feels close to it if it's not 120. Uh, but it's, you know, it's been pretty much like this. 